just let me know that if you are, are able to see it or not is it possible ah. okay okay so let's begin okay so hello guys welcome to this introductory workshop to python programming language so let's begin our journey and hello myself utkash kumar sahu a core team member of cops ig group pursuing my btech second year from iit bhu and in this workshop we are collaborating with our robotics club aero modeling club science and technology club council and cops of iit bhu so let me just give you a short summary about python you should know why you should know python programming language okay so i won't go deep into it let me just give you a short overview about it so python is a general purpose language and it is very beginner friendly and it is very you can use it for both small and complex tasks and it is used across many different industries from its more more common applications in data science and software engineering to environments like mobile app development artificial intelligence and machine learning so this multi fact is used due to use of wide array of python libraries which are available there are over 125000 different python libraries which are basically a collection of pre written codes in a particular language that anyone can access meaning that once you have learned the basics of python you will likely be able to understand others code and that too you can use it to your code and you can become a great python programmer so that's simply great so let's begin our basic walk through to python and what all topics we will be covering first of all i would let you know that what is this interface which i am using this is google colab so you all can go to net you can just type in google colab you will get a screen and you have to just open to file and open a new notebook you will get a blank new notebook wherein you can run on your python files and python scripts so let me just show you a small walk through about this collab link about google collab so what is this so this these are cells where i have written some amount of code and some amount of text so what you can do you can just write some text or any python code and you can run it using these commands and you can run the cell and you can get the output so hello guys so let's start with our journey so first of all let me tell you what all topics that i will be covering i will be covering all the data types from start if you don't know anything about python if you have zero knowledge about programming don't worry i have got your back and i will be covering all the basic topics from start and then we will move on to some general topics which are important not only for python but for general pr uh, programming purpose so we will be covering a lot of uh, topics and then we will be moving to our most uh, one of the most used library numpy library and why numpy is used across worldwide and why it is uh, an important library and at the end we will be also covering object oriented programming which is very important for you as a developer one devel as a developer you must know object oriented programming very well all right so just give me a thumbs up so we can start with our session all right all right okay so let's begin so first of all we will be talking about data types if you don't know anything about data types you surely know about basic numbers we know numbers 1 2 3 we know numbers as an integers as a whole numbers as a fraction so what if i want to do some basic a uh, basic arithmetic operations say if i want to do 1 plus 1 simple just type in 1 plus 1 and you will get your desired output if you run this cell you will be getting the output as one as simple as that no need to import any files no need to import any header files no extra uh, code you have to write just about if we talk about say if you want to multiply two numbers 1 into 3 and boom here we go we get that desired output 1 divided by 2 you get the output 0.5 so over here you can see 2 star star 4 so in python double star means power so if i want to say 2 power 4 so i will be writing two star star and four so i will be getting my answer as 16 okay so let's move on to some new arithmetic operations which you might or might not know about it so what is this percentage sign this percentage sign is not about percentage we are not taking percentage actually what we are doing we are taking the checking the remainder so 
4 percentage 2. So we know 4 divided by 2 is 2 and its remainder is 0. So if I write 4 percentage 2, I get the output as 0 because I know 4 divided by 2 will be giving me a remainder of 0. So over here you can check this example. 5 divided 5 percent 2 will be giving me 1 because we know that 5 on division by 2 gives us remainder 1. So okay, so you all have studied in primary school about board mass rule. Python also follows the same convention. It also fall, it also follows the board mass rule, wherein it takes brackets into consideration, brackets into uh, consideration before anything else. So first, what it will do? It will implement two plus three, and then it will be implementing five plus five, and then it will be taking its product. So we got our output as fifty. As simple as that, and boom, we have completed our first small section of numbers. So I hope you all get it. And is my speed fine? Do I have to increase it or uh, slow down? Is everyone able to get it? All right, all right, all right. OK, so it's a quite a good response. I hope you all enjoy this lecture. So let's move on to some interesting and tricky stuff. So what if, what if I want to assign my number to any variable? Now, what is a variable? Variable is just a term which we used to assign it to, which we use it to assign any integer, any number or any other data types. I will be talking about different data types. So don't worry. So now, first of all, there is just a small convention that you have to follow while assigning a variable. You cannot start a number or a special character by assigning a variable. Over here, I can write this name as name of var. This is basically the name of variable which I'm creating and it is storing the value to. So now what is the use and what is the purpose? It's easy. Let's understand that. If I want to assign x as 2 and y as 3, I can simply write x equals to 2, y equals to 3. And then if I want to take addition or if I want to perform any arithmetic operation, simply instead of doing it on 2 and 3, I can simply perform it on x and y. So here you can see z is equal to x plus y. And if we print z, we get our desired output as 5 because x and y were initialized as 2 and 3. Pretty easy. This was all about basic variable assignment. Now let's move on to our next data type. So this data type is known as strings. So what are strings? Strings is a collection of characters or words, lines, sentences, paragraph. These all comes under the category of strings. How can we store it or how do we declare it? If I write anything and I apply single quotes or I apply double quotes, this will be stored as a string very simple very simple and easy to understand so you might have a doubt what if i want to store a single quote inside a string so how will it do it basically you can just put double quotes and you can write in anything single quote so it will be storing so you can see the output wraps a lot of other quotes as well so now let's print a string or let's actually def uh, define a string by using a variable as i earlier said that we have to assign a name of a variable so you, have, you, you can see I have assigned the variable name as x. And now this x is being referred to the string hello. So what if I write x and what if I print it? So if I print it, I'll get my desired output. As simple as that, no need to worry, no rocket science, just basic, basic Python language. Okay, so now let's move on to some interesting thing. Okay, so this is the first topic which you will be covering, which you might not know. If you have, uh, if you don't have any Python programming language, so this will be new for you. So what am I doing over here? I am assigning a integer 12 to a number uh, to num, and I am assigning a string sam to this variable name. Okay, so these are my which I have done. So now make sure how am I writing this code? I want to print my number is colon. I want to print my number is and then I want to print my number and then I want to print my name. So what can I do? I could have just written my name is uh, Sam and uh, my uh, sorry, number is 12 and my name is Sam. So instead of using this, we will be using dot format function. If you are not aware about it, just make sure to check out that how can we implement dot format function. You will be writing the string over here and then you will be using dot format function. And over here, you can see that I have initialized one as my number and two as my name, which will get passed on to this print statement. So if I run this code, what will I get? I will be getting my output as my number is 12, which was stored in one and my name is Sam, which was stored in two. 
quite easy no need to worry now what if i want to print a new line but i want to change this number so shall i go and change the entire print statement or shall i do some optimization so what can i do i can simply change the variable name and repeat the statement again what am i doing i am changing the variable name from 12 from num as 12 to num as 14 and then i am printing it so what will i get i will be getting my number as 14 and my name is sam as simple as that so this was a short intro about strings and how you can print it and dot format function which is which comes quite handy so i hope you all get it till now just give a thumbs up i will be watching all right all right yes that's a good response so let's move on so now we are starting an important topic that is list so or you can see on my screen we will be starting with the topic yes so this is a very important concept and this will be used everywhere like not everywhere around 90 percent of time you will be using these important concepts even if you are a web developer even if you are a machine learning engineer even if you are doing some programming or you are developing in javascript django anything else but you will be requiring these topics because these are the core concepts of python all right so what am i doing over here i am storing numbers now we already know that we can store numbers in the variables so why do we require a list what is a list if we want to store a bunch of numbers so it's quite redundant to store each number with a different variable name so what i can do i can specially initialize a list wherein i will be storing all the numbers so you can see how am i initializing a list i am using a square bracket and make sure to use a square bracket because different brackets have the different meaning okay so for list we will be using a square bracket now what if i want to store the values of different data types we all know the few data types which are strings int float double so over here i am storing a string high you can see on my screen high and then i'm storing a number one and then i'm storing a list again yes you can do that you can store a list inside a list so as you can see on my screen if i print it so what will i get i will get my output as high one and a string which can and a list which contains one and two all right so now i can initialize my list to any variable what am i doing initially i was initializing a variable say x equals to num x equals to a number 12. now what am i doing i am initializing a variable my list to the required list to the list that i want so over here i have created a list of a b c it is containing three letters a b c and i have initialized this list to my list now there are few features which list has so what are those first of all the very first and primary feature which is which my list is having that my list dot append you can append if you don't know append append is basically addition of any other the value that you can append to your list so what if i run this cell so i have run my my list cell that will be implementing my list and then now i am appending b the letter my list so now what if i print my list so you can see the d has been appended in our list and it is uh, at the extreme right position so now this was creation of list now what if you want to iterate through list what if if i created a list and you want a particular specific value how shall you do so i remember i said that we have to use square brackets right so if i want to check the zeroth index okay so make sure to uh, don't get confused in arrays in list or in any other containers in programming language we start for our indexing from zero not from one so if i say that what is the index what is the first index of a b c it is not letter a it is letter b okay so that is zeroth index of my list is letter a the first index is letter b the second index is letter c and the third index is letter d all right you got it this point okay so what if i want to print my first or rather zeroth index so i have to simply write my list and then i have to write the number the index which i want and the square brackets as usual i will be getting my output as a if I want to, uh, if I want my first index, simply I will be writing one and I will be writing B. So I will be getting my answer as B because B is the first index of my list. Okay, so now let's come to this part. What if I use one colon and then I'm providing a space? What is this function doing? What if I want my list 
to print out the last uh, the entire list except the first index i want i had the list a b c d i want to print b c d so how can you print it this is where the so you can see i the there is one colon over here and there are two spaces the left hand side space and the right hand side space what does it signifies it signifies the starting index and the ending index so what am i saying that from first index mark my word from first index till the space space means entire list till the end of the list so if i print my list one colon space it will be printing me the entire list excluding the first index and what if i want to just print the first index so what can i say from zero from the start till the first index and make sure this one is exclusive so the first index will not be printed so what will i get i will just get input as a okay so now can you tell me how can i print bc if i want to print my list bc what convention or what shall i use to print the letter b and c let's see who gets it right yes make sure 3 is not inclusive 3 is not inclusive the last index is not inclusive or so yes yes many of you all have got it right so we had a b c d zeroth index is 1 so we want uh, zeroth index is a so we want to print b and c so we will be writing 1 colon 3 yes because 3 is not 3 is exclusive and we want 1 and 2 index to get printed all right so this was quite easy and a lot of you all got it correct so, yes, that's a pretty good response. I like it. Okay, very good. So, let's move on. Now, you all knew that we can append. What if I want to change any index of any value? If What if I want to change any value in a list? How can I do it? It's very simple. Just iterate through the list. Say, if I want to change my first index of my list, I will be going to my list, the zeroth index, and then I will be assigning it to a new name, new value. Over here, I have assigned it to new so what if I print it? So if I print my list, whatever will I be getting? Instead of one, we can see we have got our new variable, new term, new. All right. So this is quite easy. So if you remember, I talked about nest. So you can see an example of a nesting. What have I done? I have created a list nest and what are its values? Make sure to focus because this is quite important for you all to understand how list is working and wh what are the benefits of list. So what am I storing? The first index that I am storing is the number one. The second, the first, okay, so I let me follow the zero dimension. So the zero index is number one. First index is number two. Second index is number three. And the fourth index is this list. Do you get my point? The third index is this list. So let me just print out this list for y'all. So you can see. So what if I write of three? this will give me the third index now one can ask me so how can i get the letter target if i want to print the word target how can i iterate list is very convenient for you all to travel once you have traveled to nest th of third index then the list starts its convention from start so as as soon as i enter this list if i want to travel across the list i will be starting from the zero convention so what is nest of three of zero what is nest of three of zero? anyone tell me in the chat section? Okay, so you have already started guessing nest of three comma two. Let's see if it's correct or not. All right. So nest of three comma two is the wrong answer. I'll let you know why it's the wrong answer. So many of you all have tried it. So you all get it nest of zero, nest of three of zero, one, two. Make sure that I have created one more list inside it. So this nesting had a list of list of list. So what if I want to print the word target? Now, as soon as I have entered the nest of three of two, I have to print its first index. That is the word target. So three, two, zero was the correct answer, which I guess uh, very few of them answered it correctly. No problem, no worries. So this was all about list. 
so this was a container list so now we will be talking about a new container that dictionary and why do we use dictionary and what are its importance okay so uh, as you can see Kursh, yes actually some of the students were not able to understand fox so i was hoping we can uh, go quickly go over it again or oh, they are good which concept which concept uh, format all right all right okay so okay so let me just uh, take a short uh, summary about format function so what is happening over here okay so you can see as i mentioned that i have initialized my number as 12 and name as sam all right and now i want to use dot format function so what is it it is doing so i'll just uh, uh, give a short introduction how can we use dot format function so this is a variable so this is an empty space okay so this is an empty space which is created in our print function and now i will be using dot format and if i pass my num so we know that num has a had a value of 10. let me just comment out this code for now for timing so what if i print this statement what should i get i will be getting my number 12. so what am i doing over here I am creating a blank value in my print statement and then I'm using dot format function to print this number. So I have over here, I have created one blank space. So I am passing one variable num into my, uh, into my uh, function. So over here, you saw that I, I wrote one and two. So why I wrote one and two, I'll just let you know if I write any number, say variable. Okay. Right, uh, uh, this is my number, right? So this is my number and now instead of passing just num i will be initializing at variable is equals to num and then i will be printing it so it is convenient for us so see 12 this is my number so 12 the variable from dot format function which we used and this is my number got printed so i hope you all get it just give me a thumbs up or all right cool 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 If you have any doubt, no worries. You will be getting this entire notebook. You can rerun this code. You can change its code. You can implement. And you can also check. Uh, you can explore uh, how dot format function is working, how different functions are working. All right. So let's move on to dictionary. So what is dictionary and why do we use dictionary? Make sure to note down the important points. If you feel that this might be confusing for you all, just have a habit to uh, write or you can use it collab or you can dry run your code. You can reuse pen, paper or any other ID, whichever you feel like. All right. So let's move on to dictionaries and what are dictionaries and why do we use dictionaries? So we knew that we are storing list in a square brackets, right? We were storing list in a square brackets. Over here, we are storing dictionaries in a curly bracket. Make sure to check out we are storing dictionaries in a curly brackets and the, a dictionary stores a key pair value. Yes, I will repeat myself. A dictionary will store a key pair value. What I meant to say, if I'm storing a dictionary, I will be passing a key and its value. I will be passing a key and its value. So over here, we can see the key is key one and its value is item one. All right. Now, what if I want to pass another key pair? I can simply use a comma. So this comma signifies that I am storing another key pair value into my dictionary D. So over here, you can see my key two is the second key and item two is the second value which I'm storing in key two. So let me just run this code for you all. So now if I print D, what will I get? I will be getting my key pair value for key one item one, key two item two. Pretty easy, pretty, pretty simple. Now, if someone asks me, what if I want to iterate through items? If I want to get the pair value, how will I get it? Over here, if you remember what we used for list, we use list and then we ask the index. Then, then where over there we use list and then we use the number. Over here, the number convention won't work because the numbers are assigned to keys. So over here, if I want to print item one, what can I do? I can simply write D, the dictionary which I have implemented, and then I will pass on the key. And if I run this code, what will I get? I will get the pair value of key one. That is item one over here. So you all can see. Now, there comes the catch. Now comes the tricky and most important part in dictionaries. What if I want to store multiple data types in a dictionary? Yes, Python gives us this great opportunity to store multiple data types in our dictionaries. So you can see, I have created a key of brand and then I am storing a string. What am I storing? I am storing a string for over here. So you can see I have stored string. Now next, 
it is just a short description about a car model so if i say that whether this car is electric so over here false false is boolean so make uh, we will be covering this boolean operations and boolean topics later on in this python guide don't worry about it but just for now just make sure that you know that booleans are basically trues and false all right so you all know about int so if i want to save that year in which it was made so i can say 1964 and now the catch the dictionary also stores a list oh my god so dictionary can also store a list inside of it so this is great and this is a quite a handy tool which you can use you can also store dictionary inside of dictionaries so this is a short example so let me just run this code for you all so you can see brand ford color so everything got printed if we when we printed our dictionary so now what if someone ask me if i don't know the data type if someone ask me that tell me the data type of key, key year so you know that you have stored at 1964 so what is its data type pretty pretty easy pretty simple you just have to print type and then dictionary and the key you have to just pass on the key and it will be printing int so you all know that we all know that 1964 is a int so it will be printing me int this was all for dictionary very basic very simple but very useful it is used in a lot of places so now let's move on to booleans okay so this is quite a cheesy topic and sometimes it might get tricky when you come to boolean operations so no worries we will be covering that too what is boolean trues and false very simple as simple as that a true means a true a false means a false all right so don't worry we'll be having boolean operations later on in this course so let's move on to the next container this is tuples so we have covered list we have covered dictionaries and now we will be covering tuples so what is a tuple we all remember that list if we want to store a list what we were using we were using a square brackets for dictionary we were using curly brackets for tuples we are using circle circular brackets round brackets so what am i doing i am storing number 1 2 3 in my tuple and then i am just uh, printing the first value of it so you can see p of 0 uh, will be printing me 1 as simple as that you all know it but there is one catch we all knew that list had a option of append list had a option uh, list had a option to change the values of any index but unfortunately tuple is not having that option tuples are immutable whereas list are mutable you can change the values in a list but you cannot do that in uh, tuples so this is the last container which we will be covering in this uh, container python series that is set very easy to understand and let me show you how you can implement a set so you can see on my screen i have written 1 2 3 numbers in curly brackets so now don't get confused between dictionaries and sets in dictionaries when we used curly brackets we were passing a key and a pair over here we are just passing numbers over here we are just passing numbers and separating it with a comma so this is the initially in initialization of a set and so what if i print it so i will be getting my set so now what it what makes set different from other operation from other containers we all know list we all know dictionary we know tuples so now set in set you can only store unique values yes in set you can only store unique values so you can see the example over here in this set i have added 1 2 3 One two one two three multiple ones multiple twos and multiple threes. What if I print it? If I just run myself, I will just be getting my output as one two and three. Yes. So this is the power of a set, wherein you will only get the unique values. So let me just initialize. So how can you initialize a set? Very easy. You just have to write. So this s is a variable. Mark my words. So we are assigning the set to a variable s. So s is set, and then we are passing on the values. so now just make sure when we are using this convention set no need to apply curly brackets we can directly use square brackets and then we can directly store our number so let me just print out s for you all so we have stored multiple ones twos and threes but what our s is printing it is just printing one two and three so we all know that list had dot append likewise set has dot add function so dot add so if i say s dot add that means the set which i have initialized which i have uh, given a variable name as s add number 4 into it so set will say why not i can surely add my number 4 into it so now if i print it what am i getting i'm getting 1 2 3 and 4 now we all knew that set only stores unique values so now what if i add one more 4 into it so what will happen it will not store the extra 
it will not store the extra code. And guys, we have completed our first section of this Python guide. So is my speed OK? Is everyone able to understand? Just give a thumbs up. They wanted right. to review Dict again, I guess. Some of them wanted. So let's do it, I guess. All right, all right. So we will be covering dictionary once more. No need to worry, guys. Dictionaries, Python, Tuple, these all feel like you. these are so, uh, very complicated topics, but this is very easy to understand. Let me just give you a short summary about dictionary once more. What we are storing, we are storing a key and a pair value. So you can see over here in a dictionary, when we are initializing dictionary, we are using a curly bracket and then we are storing a key and a pair. And then if you want to store multiple key pair values, so now tell me, so now uh, many of you might have this doubt that why are we using dictionary? So in real world applications, why do we use dictionary? So just because of that, I have used this example. I have taken this example for y'all. What is this dictionary storing? If I am a car, if I am a car salesperson, and if I want to have my information about different cars, so what? Which is the best? Which is the best uh, container which I can use if I want to store the data and its value? Can anyone tell me in the chat section which is the best container which will which we can use? Yes, very good. Yes, we can store a group of interconnected data. Yes. So you all got it why we are using dictionary. So this was the basic purpose of using dictionary and the very important and very uh, useful fact is not only strings, we can store multiple data types. That is the best thing uh, that dictionary can offer to us. So we can store multiple data types. So you can see how am I storing? I'm just uh, writing a key value and a pair. Key value and a pair. Make sure to remember the key value and a pair. And if I want to store multiple key value pairs, I have to just use a comma. As simple as that. Just a single comma will differentiate your different key value pairs. So this is all about this. If you still have any doubt, no worries. You, you will be getting this code. You can rerun this code. You can apply any changes and you can check in whatever way you want, you can implement it. You can play around with this code. All right. So now, as we have covered the first section of our topic, so kudos for you all, for everyone who has stayed till now and who have understood the topics. All right. So now let's move on to the comparison operators. OK, so as I said, we had Boolean operators. There is one more thing, comparison operators. In our primary section, we all have studied one is greater, uh, one is greater, less than, or any number, we all know. This same convention follows in Python, as simple as that. One greater than two, give me a false. No, it is a wrong statement. You cannot do that. One less than two, yes, true. It is a correct statement. So what if I tell one is greater than equal to one? What will what should be its answer? Whether it should be true or false? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, I can see a good response. That's great. That's awesome. So one is greater than equals to one. Yes, it will give me true because one is not greater, but yes, it is equal to one. So now one equals equals to one will always give me true. Now, can anyone tell me if I write one equals to one, what will I get? What will I get if I write one equals to one? Will it give me some error? Will it throw me some error? Yes, yes, everybody wrote error, but let, let me see who writes the correct error. Which error will I get if I write one equals to one and then I run my code? Yes, very good, very good. I yes, yes. Oh my God, such a brilliant group of people, uh, brilliant students you all are. One equals to one will be giving me a declaring error. Why? Because remember how we were assigning a variable. We were assigning a variable when we were giving its name. Say num name name equals to twelve. What we were doing? We were initializing the integer 12 to this variable name. So what is happening when I write one equals to one? First of all, if you remember, I said you cannot use any special characters, any numbers or any uh, keywords to initialize number in the start. Over here, one equals to one will give me wrong answer. So what if I write S1 equals to one? This will give me a correct answer because this variable declaration is correct because over here I am using S. That is a valid uh, variable name which I can start. One equals to one will give me a wrong. And you can see the error. Whenever you get an error in Python, you can see that what the error is. So I can read syntax error kind assigned to a literal. We all know that one equals to one does not hold true. All right. 
sorry it holds true but it will not hold true if we are assigning it to one all right so this is the same case for strings if i say high equals to by the high the high is not equals to by it is checking string by string it is checking character by character is h i equals to b y i no it's no it's so it will give me false so this was the basics of comparison operators so now we will be moving to logical operators so if you have not studied about logical operators in your pre board in your middle school don't worry it's just a basic operation let me just uh, read the chat section let me uh, tell me uh, tell me guys that whether you know about true and false logical operators or not just write yes or no okay so i can see some a lot of yes but a lot of no's too no worries i will be covering it all so in our 11 12 standard we study about some logical operators so what it is it is very easy to understand if i say true and true what will be its output it will be a true true and true will give me true true and false will give me a false because we are taking and of both the numbers we are taking and of both the booleans true and false will give me false false and true will give me false and false and false will obviously give me a false all right so this was basic and operation very easy to understand so now let's move on to or operation what is or truth or truth t or t t over here i have initialized it as true and f is initialized as false so true or true will give me true true or false will again give me true because why why it is happening we are checking true or f as we remember that we use one is greater than equals to one so what it was checking one is greater to or equal to one so yes it was equal to one so we are getting one two that means the statement is true similarly false and true will give me true false and false where both the statements are denial are at denial so it will give me false very easy let's check it in the code and let's see how we can implement it one greater than two very simple one greater than two it's false and false and two less than three less than three is true but we know that false and true will give me false so if i run this cell i will get uh, my output as false so next if i check or operation one is greater than two true yes one uh, sorry oh my god one is greater than two false one is not greater than two so this will be giving me false false or two less than three true two is less than three so false or true will give me true so now this was just about two statements one and two right true or false so what if i have a chain or what if i have a bunch of trues and false and bunch of or as ands so what am i doing over here one equals equals to two or two equals equals to three or four equals equals to four so what should be the answer yes yes it's it's quite easy it's very easy one equals to two false so let 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 me go bit by bit in this one equals equals to true this is false so false or so let me just uh, move on so what have i done false or two equals equals to three false what is false or false we know f or f is equal to f right so now let's move on we are having f or uh, f or and now four equals equals four what is four equals equals four true so what will i get false or true very simple and very easy to understand yes it will be giving me true so you can see the output over here it will be giving me true so this was all about the logical operators so now let's move on to some general statements all right so let's move on to if else statements many of you have uh, might have heard about if else statement just give me in the just let me know in the comment section that whether you know if else statement or this is the first time for you all so there are a lot of yes all right so those who don't know i will be covering this if else statement it is not at all difficult it is very easy and how it is different from a, like uh, how can we implement if statements so very easy first write if and then the condition that you want to pass and then a colon this is the initialization of if statement i will repeat myself if the condition and then a colon and what is happening over here what is the statement which i have written so if you remember if you know that when we have, whenever we write this colon whenever we write a print statement we have to pass a ident what is ident as you can see there is some space over here is this space visible just below if there is a space just write in the comment section 
Yes, you all can see. Why are we using this space? This is the Python. This is how the Python was created. If I write print over here, just below it, it will throw me an error. You can see over here the red line. Let me just run this cell for you all. So what am I getting? I'm getting an identification error, expected an ident block. So how can you add an ident block? Just go over here and just put a tab. Just click on tab and that tab will give you the required ident space. Now, if I print this line, if I run the cell, so what is happening? One is less than two. Yes, it is. So one is less than two. Then what will happen? The statement, the if statement will run. So it will go inside. And what it is showing? It is showing that you have to just print a word yet. So it just printed it yet. All right. So now, so this was just the example. So now what if I reverse this? If I say one, if one is greater than equals to two, is it true? If is one greater than equals to two, we all know it's not true. So what will happen? What will be my output? Nothing blank because we know that one is not greater than two. So it will not run this if loop and we are having no multiple uh, statements. So it will just exit the code. So now let's move, move on to L statement. So we know that one is less than two. So print the first. What if I reverse this? What if I say one greater than equals to two? So what will be my output? Just let me know in the comment section. What will be my output? Yes, you all got it right. Very easy, very simple to understand. We know that if statement will not run, so it will go into our else loop and it will be printing last. All right. So now let's move on to elif statement. Elif is basically a abbreviation of else if. Matlab if ya to ye, ya to ye, ya to else. So ya to wala term is basically the elif statement which we are using. So over here, what am I doing? I'm creating an if loop. And make sure that you cannot add elif anywhere. You have to add it below if statement. All right. So elif will throw an error if you initialize it before if statement. So you have to write first if statement. That is the compulsion. If one equals equals to true, then print first. Else if three equals equals to three, print mid. So we know that you can see the line over here. So this shows that this entire loop is under one block. This entire if else statement, if else nest is in one block. So if any one of the statement gets run, gets executed, the entire code will just print that number and then it will get uh, get out from that loop. So if I say one equals equals to two, no, it's not true. It will not run this. Three equals equals to three. Yes, it will run this. So if this is if we are getting this output, will this these two cells run? Will these two LF statements and else statement run? No, they won't be running. So let me just give you an example. So I have just so let me just run this cell for you all. So what am I getting middle? Yes, because three is equals equals to three. So now this print statement is not inside our if else loop. Why? Because we are not adding ident. What if I, I, I would have add an ident? So this would come under my else statement. This space, this two line which I have left does not matter. The thing that matters is the ident which that I have left. All right. So I will be removing this ident and then I will be printing it again. So what am I getting? Getting the middle and uh, as soon as, uh, as soon as I've got this middle, I will be exiting this FLS loop and then I will be printing my statement print done. All right. Very easy to understand. Let's see. I hope, I hope all of you all get got this concept. Just give me a thumbs up or right. Yes. Let's. All right. Very cool. Okay. So let's move on to our next topic that is for loops. So many of you would have definitely heard about for loop. Just give me a yes or no that do you know about for loops or not? Yes, it is very basic, very simple. But don't worry, even if you don't know about for loops, no worry, I will be teaching you all. So what is for loop and why do we use for loop? All right. So let me just show you a short example. What have I created over here? Can anyone tell me sequence is equal to this? Which container have I used? Let's see who gets the right answer. Oh my God. Very awesome. Awesome guys. Awesome. So I have created a list of sequence where I have stored the numbers from one to five. Very simple. Now, if someone tells me that print all these numbers, print all these numbers. So what will I do? I will iterate through the loop or shall I use list of zero list of one list of two that will be redundant. So what will I be using? I will be using a for loop. So let me just show you a basic convention. How can we write for loop? So I have initialized for, then I have added a space. So you can see for, then I have added a space. And what is item over here? If you have done programming in say other languages like C, C++, so over there we use a convention for i, for int i equals to zero. 
so over here we are instead of that variable we are just writing item for item in sequence so make sure this is very basic english what it may, what it says that for item that is the variable in our sequence in my sequence and my sequence is 1 2 3 4 5 print very simple so let me just run the cell for your so what it is having okay so i have not run the cell sequence so see what i got i got 1 2 3 4 5 very easy very simple so now okay so what if someone tells me that you have to print five yes you want to print five yep so we know that over here sequence we knew that uh one two three four there were five indexes there were five numbers which were stored so i can basically write for item for the variable in sequence print yes so until we get uh, our sequence until we complete our sequence it will be printing yes so now the catch and a best part about for loops when we use in c plus uh, when we use in python what can we do if i want to do any arithmetic operation i repeat myself if i want to do any arithmetic operations say addition multiplication subtraction anything whatever you feel like just print it in a most simpler way so what have i created or initially i have used the variable as item so i have just changed the variable name to jelly so uh, you might not get confused that what is the difference between item and jelly these both both the terms are same these are just the variable through which we will be iterating inside the for loop so for jelly in sequence print me jelly plus jelly as simple as that we knew that we had a list of 1 2 3 4 5 it will be printing 1 plus 1 2 plus 2 3 plus 3 4 plus 4 5 plus 5 this was a short introduction to for loop so i hope you all get it was it difficult for you all this right very very good very good all right so let's move on to a next uh, loop that is a while loop so this sometimes you might get this error okay i will be talking about that error too so let me just say this is a while loop which i will be using so what have i done i is equals to one i have assigned the number one to a variable i simple till now nothing difficult so now what is happening while i is less than five so if you are not able to understand what is happening so i will say it in a layman's time layman's term jab tak i is less than five jab tak i is less than five while i is less than five implement my while loop implement my while loop what am i saying jab tak i is less than five print i is equal to make sure if you remember the format function what am i doing instead of writing i i have used i is and then i have used a curly bracket am i creating an empty space and i am using dot format function am i using dot format function and then what i want to add i want to add the number i so what is happening over here i i am saying that i is less than 5 jab tak i less than 5 hai tab tak print me this so we have initialized i as 1 so i to kabhi change ho nahi raha so we are not changing the value as i so what we are doing over here we are just incrementing an i incrementing plus 1 to our i so you can see what is happening let me just show you a dry run of this code what will happen initially the i is equals to 1 right so it will enter this while loop and it is saying that 1 is less than 5 yes 1 is less than 5 what will happen then print me this so what will it print i is and over here i is 1 right so it i will get my first statement and then what am i saying increment i as 1 what if you don't run this what if you don't write this code i would suggest not to do such type of things because your computer might get hanged it might slow down it will run an infinite loop it will run an infinite loop because one is less than five and you are not initializing i you are not changing i so what will happen until infinite amount of time i is less than five and it will be printing the statement so make sure you use this and once you use this what will happen i is equals to one then it, the i will get in, increment as i equals to 2 then it will again enter this while loop it will say that yes again 2 is less than 5 so again print me this so it will be printing my second statement this will continue until i is equals to 5 so 5 is less than 5 make sure the comparison op operators 5 is less than equals to 5 will give me a false 5 is not less than 5 5 is less than equals to 5 so what if i have used a less than equals to so this would have given me 1 is equal to 5 so you can see the difference over here very easy this is a very short and very uh, simple uh, explanation of while loop which you can get over here so now let's see everyone got this while loop or not just give me yes or no in the comment section okay okay very easy for you all yes i can see in the chat section okay so let's move on to our next term range what is the range so 
we all knew that we were using for loop. See how these topics are interconnected with each other. So if you study in a flow, if you follow this pattern, if you follow this Python guide, I have wrote each and every basic topics from scratch so that anyone can understand. And the order makes it more perfect because I am implementing the things in an order so that you can you are able to grasp those topics. So what am I writing? I'm writing range five. What is range five? Let me just tell you a short information. What is range five? Let me just run this code. What it is doing range five storing numbers from zero till five exclusive five is exclusive. Now, if I if someone asked me that print print it, then show me how you can how you can say that it is storing zero one two three four. Just show it to me. OK, I will show it to him. What am I doing? I'm using a for loop. I'm using a for loop and I'm initializing my variable I and then I'm saying that for I in range matlab that variable i go inside the range and then print me i whatever is this they are just print me so for i in range 5 and range 5 had the values from 0 to 4 print i so you can see if i run this cell what will i get i will be getting my answer 0 1 2 3 4 make sure range is storing numbers from 0 till 4 exclusive 5 is not included all right so now if someone says convert it into a list all right, very easy. Just pass list function and the pass range five. Very simple and easy as that. So you can see, just remember what the list is having. It is having a square bracket. Don't get confused between the square bracket, curly bracket, or round brackets. Okay. So this was the basics. Now let me introduce list comprehension. Oh my God, is it a advanced level of list? Uh, kind of yes, kind of no. So let me just give you a short intro about list comprehension and what is list comprehension and why do we use list comprehension? So you can see on my screen, I wrote X. I initialized uh, variable X as one, two, three, four. All right, you can see this. Now, if someone asked me that, okay, so you said you can do addition. You said you can append a list. You said you can add anything. You can do any operation. Now, give me power of X. Now, perform power of two. Say you had number one, two, three, four. And I say that you give me power of two of each number. So what will be one power two? Yes, it will be one, two power two, four, three power two, nine, four power two, 16. So what will be the basic idea behind it? You will be using a for loop. Is it true or not? You all will be using a for loop to initialize, to iterate through the list. And then we will be incrementing and then we will applying our operation. But here comes list comprehension into play. This is very important, guys. Focus. And this is very important concept and you will be using this a lot. Once you are through with your list comprehension, then you will feel that, yes, this is the most easiest way to perform any operation on any list. All right. So over here, you can see I have created an empty list. What I have created, I have created an empty list. Out is equal to this is a list and I have created it empty. It has nothing inside of it. So now what am I saying? I trade item in X. So I know that I have initialized my X as one, two, three, four. And now what am I saying that in, that enters into my list and then item in X, what I do, what I have to append, I have to append item square. Simple out was an empty list. So we can use dot append function out dot append item and just print me out. What will be the answer? One, four, five, uh, one. Uh, okay. So I have not run this cell. So X, I have just, I've just basically just run this cell so that my computer knows that yes, X is a variable which is storing a list one, two, three, four. So you can see the output one, two, one, four, nine, sixteen. So now this had like four to three to four lines. What if I say I can do it in one line? Yes, I can do this entire operation in just one line using list comprehension. Over here, you saw that I created an empty list. All right. So again, I'm creating a list. So you can see the square brackets across the uh, across the code. What I have done, I have created empty list and then I have past the operations which I want to perform. So over here, initially I had to do, I was taking square. Over here, I'm taking cube. You can change the number if you want to take square, cube, any operation if you want. So you can do. So what am I doing? Item cube for item in X. Let me repeat myself. Let me repeat myself. For item in X, which says that for item in X, I trade my item in X and perform this operation. Just run this cell. Boom. You got your desired output. So what is one power three? One, two power three, eight, three power three, 24, and four power four, 64, four power three, 64. All right. So everybody got this concept of list comprehension or not? Just uh, uh, write down in the chat section. Yes or no?
all right what is the name of list in which it will be stored this is a okay so what you can do is you can just uh, write you can create anything like suppose a uh, store and this will store my list so if i just print a uh, store do you got the desired output what it is doing the word store is storing my list comprehension very easy very simple so now we have covered another big section of our python guide so now we will be starting some important topics functions this is a new topic for you all if you have not if you don't know about function don't worry i will be explaining you how to write a function what is function and why do we need function okay so what if i tell you that i want addition of two numbers if i give you set of 10 pairs say if i say 20 10 40 30 25 35 42 43 and if i say that you have to add all these pairs so what will you do will you man 30 40 plus 40 20 plus 25 or rather you will create something which you can use again and again won't it be a uh, convenient just write yes or no if you feel that this uh, method is convenient or not all right so everybody thinks that this is a convenient way so let me just show you how you can use this very important very informative and very easy tool to use how can we create a function so this is what a function is doing so what i have wrote over here so just just make sure that how am i initializing this function because this initialization holds true everywhere okay so what am i doing i'm creating this def word this def keyword will store like say a definition for function and over here i'm passing a variable name we all knew that we had to pass something as a variable name say if i want to store num equals to 12 so over here my function's name is stored as my func and then i will be using curly brackets to pass oh now the important thing is what to pass in curly brackets you can either leave it blank yes you can either leave it blank or you can pass some inputs so what is happening over here that i have created def my function name and then i have passed a curly brackets uh, sorry the round uh, the close brackets and then i have passed a parameter default this default is a string this default is a string okay so now what is this what is this happening over here what is this doc strings goes over here so now what will happen in real world scenarios whenever you will do development ai ml anything you will do you will be creating lot of functions and now if you have once you have created a function it is important for others to understand your code what if i create a random function and if i don't give a proper documentation about it so what will happen the other peeps the other developers will could not able to understand what you have written so if i want to say add numbers this will just show me that this doc string is containing a function which will add numbers so what have i done that i have created def and then i have passed something all right so let me just print it for you all this what will happen if i print it if i just run this cell what is happening this what is happening that i have created def my function name the parameters just a string which i am passing and then i am printing that parameter i am printing that parameter and this is how you have initialized the function now what if i want to call a function my func you we know that if i said num equals to 12 and if i write num and when i run the cell it will be giving my output as 12 yes it will give my output as 12 because i have made num equals to 12 and just write 12 now what if i write my func what it will give me will it run the will it run my function or not just tell me just write yes or no 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 okay okay so yes you got it right it won't run my function because this function as you know this function is a type of different variable which we are assigning if i run this cell my func what will happen it will just give me that what it is it is a function what is my func it is a function and how do i call my function how can i call my function so my func and then i have to pass these brackets now if you remember what happened when i created my func i also passed a parameter so what if i don't pass a parameter what if i don't pass a parameter what will happen it will throw me it will just show default because it is it is telling me that you when you created the function you said that you have to pass a parameter and over here you are not passing a parameter so this is false this is redundant you cannot do that so what am i doing i am creating i am writing my function my func and then i am passing the string and what this function was doing 
when I pass this uh, variable param1, it is just printing that uh, variable. So I have passed my func new param, what will it do? It will basically print new param for me. Very easy, very simple. And there was one more thing which, which I want to show you. Over here, I was initializing param1 as default. This is a function inside of which I am applying, I am storing my default string in a variable param. I can simply remove this also if I want to see. I can remove this, no harm in this. So like, uh, I just have to pass anything. Say I, I just pass uh, anything. So you can store it in the form of function. And over here, you have to change this code. Because we are not passing param1, we are passing, we are passing a string into it, right? So over here, you can see, you can directly run like my function param1 is equal to new param. So it will give us the same output. So now, as I said that you can do addition. So I'll just give you a short example what you can do. You can basically say like uh, return me square of a number. If I give you a number, if I give you a set of numbers, if I say like if I give you numbers from 1 to 2 or uh, 1 to 10. So and I ask you that print me square of all the numbers. So what will you do? You can either use for loop. You can use for loop. But if I tell, if I say that give me the seventh number square, the seventh number square, and then give me third number square, then give me say 15th number square, then what will you do? You might go towards function and tell, and you will think that function, please make a function for me, which will return x square. So what am I doing over here? Def, my, the initialization of a function, the function name over here, I am making a square name, square, and I'm passing a number. What I will be doing, I'm passing a number and then column and make sure to put that ident block because this is important in for loop, if loop, while loop, everywhere the ident is important. And this, this uh, you cannot change this because this was originally created when the Python programming codes were created. They said that you have to follow this convention. You have to give a ident block. So over here, what is happening? Square x and what you are returning, you are returning x square. You know, double, uh, uh, double asterisk means square. Just run this function. And now, over here, what am I initializing my out? This out variable is initialized to function square of two. So if I print out, so what will happen? It will just give me four. If I change this, if I change it to say 34, simply it will return me x square. So 32, 34 square, even if you don't know, even if you're not fast, as fast as calculated, don't worry. Python is very fast, very efficient. It will do it for you. Okay. So now, I will, this is the last topic in this section two, that is Lambda function. Very important guys. Just let me, just uh, let me know that whether you understood this concept of function of, or not. Okay. So what is doc string? Doc string is basically a format where you can store the information of a function. If someone else is using that code, that person might not know that what is happening inside that function, right? If I want to store a plus b, if I am creating a function a plus b, I can simply write it in my doc function that this function is doing arithmetic additions for me. All right. So this is basic example. Okay. Doc strings. So now let's move on to the lambda function. I hope you all are enjoying this session till now. So let's see, because now we have moved to a zone where the Python will get much more interesting and much more tricky. So yes, lambda function again. Once you have mastered it, you will be using again and again, again and again. And this lambda function is a short form of function. If you thought that function is better, it is better than for loops. It is better than assigning again and again. Then lambda expressions come into play. So what I have done, I have created a def function of times two. Basically, I will be passing a number and variable into two. If I pass a number five, five into two, it will return me 10. If I say times of two, so I, I have created my function times two. And then I'm passing an integer to what will it return? It will return four. Very simple as that. Now, what if I say, how can I optimize it further? I don't want to write def uh, times to return variable. I don't want to write everything. I want to shorten it. No worries. Lambda expression is there for you. No worries. Okay. So you all knew that how I was, uh, how was I writing this def times two variable. And then initially what I did, I used this. I used an ident block, but if I write it in one line, will it give me error? Just let me know. Will this line give me error or not? Let's see who gets this. Maybe error. Yes. So there's some dicey situations over here. Yes. No. Yes. Syntax error. Okay, cool. Let me run it for y'all. Let me run it for y'all. We will not get any error. 
most of you all got it wrong no worry you will not get this error this will only happen when you will be writing this def colon in a new line if you write this over here you will get an error but over here you will not get an error so if i am writing this why can't over here what all things are of no use the def is of no use the return value is of no use so can i just uh, remove it over here times 2 is of no use it can be done very easily over here just make sure how am i using how am i implementing lambda function it is important for you all to understand how am i implementing over here i was using a keyword def and then i was initializing it to a variable the function variable times 2 instead of using def times 2 i will be using this term lambda very important i will be using this term lambda and then what i was passing because you have to pass into a function whether it's a, any lambda function expression or a function if you want if you want some output you have to give some input right so basic conventions over here the lambda keyword then the variable which you want to pass and instead of return you can simply remove this return and directly this write this how easy and convenient it is to create a lambda expression just give me yes or no that is it better than functions or not yes lambda is a keyword okay yes 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 better yes it is better than uh, creating a function so let me just run it for you all lambda where where just give me the variable into 2 now what am i doing how can i use this lambda expression i will be initializing this lambda expression to a variable func is equal to lambda expression so my func is the lambda expression and what am i passing i'm passing a number suppose if i pass a number 3 that will be my variable and what i want over here say if i want like variable into 3 so if i run this what will i get 3 into 3 simple as that 9 very easy very convenient so instead of just showing right multiple i will be showing you some more example like basic arithmetic operation x is equal to lambda a this is the input which i will be giving and what do i want as my output i want a plus if i pass a number if i pass any integer 20 25 what will i get i will get the integer plus 10 very simple so over here i am just printing x uh, it's not necessary for you to write print it is just a basic convention which you can you cannot follow if you want it's all up depends upon you print me x the lambda expression where i stored a the addition of integer to 10 and just print it to me so what will i get 5 plus 10 15 very simple as that so now if someone ask me what if i want to pass multiple inputs in a lambda expression in function you all know that we will be creating def the variable name and then in brackets we will be passing multiple we can pass multiple inputs so how can we pass a lambda expression very easy very simple so i have initialized as x equals to lambda lambda expression and then i am passing two variables and how am i passing just by this small comma i hope you all can see this small comma which says that what am i doing i'm passing two inputs a and b in my lambda expression and what i want as my output i want multiple i want the multiplication of both the numbers over here you can use any arithmetic operation according to your will according to your requirement and just print me so in x what i was passing I have, now i have to pass two variables i was passing 5 and 6 the 5 will be initialized to a and the 6 will be initialized to b so this was all about lambda function as simple as that no need to complicate things it is very simple to use now let's move on to our next topic maps and filters just write me in the comment section where you get uh, whether you got it uh, the lambda function or not this is quite easy yes 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 a lot of yes very good guys very good guys okay so now we will be starting with uh, uh, another topic maps and filters so now the so what all things which we have covered just uh, i'll just give a short uh, guide like what all things which we have covered we saw variables we saw uh, operators we saw if else for loop while loop and we saw logical operators logical comparators and all we saw now what is maps and filters over here let me just show you via code what i meant to say what i i am trying to show i have created a function over here and this function's name is assigned to times 2 and what am i passing i am passing a variable where all right and what i want as my output i want the simply return me times 2 all right so if i pass any number 5 6 i just want 5 into 2 6 into 2 so this will just give me my desired output so now 
over here you can see sequence again we got this term sequence and what it is storing yes it is storing a list all right so what am i doing over here sequence is storing a list of numbers from 1 to 5 now where what is map and how what why are we using maps now we know that to say implement a function what we were doing we were using a for loop right we were using a for loop to implement to iterate through the list and apply those operation into our individual element what if i say i can do it in one line simple no need of any for loop nothing is required what am i doing i am making i am creating a map and make sure that how what the what all things i'm passing i'm passing times two what is times two times two is the function which i created times two is the function that i created over here which will return me the number into two so what is happening i am passing times two and then i am passing my list for sequence of numbers so what will it return me what will it return me it will show that this map is created at this particular location if you don't know this number don't it's a decimal number this is basically where your map is stored inside your computer all right so don't no need to worry no need to memorize this is nothing if you run it again and again you will get some other output okay so now tell me that you have to just print it to me so now how will you print it we knew that sequence was formed in the list so let me just create a list or let me just print it via list so what am i saying return the list so list of map of the function and the list we which we want as our input so what will be my output if i run the cell it will give me the list of numbers where the required function has been run so one into two will give me two two into two will give me four three into two will give me six and this eight and ten so this was about map so we know that we now what if i say that we don't want to have to create a function we don't want to create a any for loops we just want to create a list of numbers wherein we want to print our multiplication in just one line yes in just one line so you can see this line i hope everybody remembers the lambda expression our one and only famous lambda expression no need to create any function so over here what am i doing i am saying that lambda expression the function over here as you saw that i was passing times 2 which was my function so instead of just passing times 2 i can directly create a function if i want and using a lambda expression is very convenient what am i doing over here i'm passing my input var and then just give me multiplication of 3 like say if i'm passing any number just give me number into 3 what if i run this cell 1 into 3 3 2 into 3 6 3 into 3 9 12 and 15 and go on it will go on and on and on so now this was a short discover uh, explanation about map and what is filter these two are very similar like uh, very basic to understand i hope you all got the concept of map just give me yes or no in the chat section okay the where is not declared actually where is the iterate where is the uh, variable which will be iterating inside the loop what we had to pass we already passed sequence right so that where will be iterating inside that sequence so this was all about uh, where all right so now we will be moving on to filter map once again okay 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 i'll be explaining it once again just a short overview with that what is happening over here in a map you have to pass two inputs you have to pass a function and then you have to pass that where you want to use this function over here you can see i was passing times two function name and then i was passing the sequence of numbers and what it was doing for me it was directly applying a map of it, a map and it was just printing me this uh, required output and what was times it was the function wherein i wanted the uh, multiplication by two so over here instead of creating times two i have just created a function over here all right so now let's come to filter what is filter very easy to understand filter will filter out in layman's term filter will filter out what will it filter it will either filter something or it will return some boolean values let's see from our example filter again it will take two input how many input it will take it will take two input wherein i will be passing my function and i will be passing the list or anything where i want to use this filter so what am i doing that lambda item item is the variable and what i want that item percentage to can anybody tell me what is the meaning of item percentage to what does this percentage sign hold just write in the comment section remainder 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 uh, even numbers 
Okay, so it is basically remainder. If I say five percentage two, it will give me output one because five percentage two has a div uh, will five divide by two will give me two and the remainder is one. All right, so most of you all have got it correct. It will give me the remainder. So what is happening? That item, the variable item percentage two. If the item percentage two equals equals zero, so now tell me all those numbers percentage two will give me zero. Which set of numbers percentage two will give me zero? Even numbers, even numbers, even numbers, even numbers. Very good, very good. Yes, yes, very good. Easy, easy, very easy. All the even numbers percentage two will give me zero because they are having. Make sure I use double equals to sign. Okay, double equal to sign is important for everyone. Okay, so now I I will just run this code. Okay, so now what is happening? My filter function is stored at this uh, vary at this storage. Okay, so th this is basically the storage where the filter function is stored. Okay, filter uh, is stored. So now just I want to pass list. We already created our sequence. If you remember, the sequence was one, two, three, four, five. And now what am I saying? That iterate through the list, iterate through the sequence, and if that individual term percentage two equals equals to zero, then filter it. If it is zero, then print it or else filter it out. So what if I run this cell? It will give me two comma four because one, three, five are odd numbers and won't get printed. I hope you all got this concept. It was very easy. Just give me yes or no if you felt that this was a tricky concept to understand. Ah, uh, line ninety three has no error. This is basically line ninety three shows the storage where the filter is stored. Whenever you create something. the any variable any function any filter map it is stored somewhere in your output in your your pc in your uh, compiler so where it is stored this is just the location of the uh, where it is stored it is a hexadecimal number but no need to emphasize on it it is like um, no need to worry it is nothing it will just take care about the computer so don't worry so i just let me know okay so yes yes i can see a lot of yes in the chat section so let's move on can we do the same thing using a map Yes, you can do the same thing in the map. When we pass the map, we pass the function, and then we pass the input. All right. Uh, yes. Now, okay. So Aryan has asked a good question. Item percentage two equals equals zero. It should return zero or one. Is it true or not? Hmm? Yes or no? Is it true or not? Any number. If I take percentage with two, either it will be a even number or a odd number. So what will be its remainder? It can only be zero or one. The remainder cannot surpass the number two. If I say any number, percentage ten. So what can be my maximum remainder? My maximum remainder will be nine, nine, nine. Very good, very good. Simple, very easy concept. All right. So I hope you all got this concept. Okay. So now let's move on to our next topic. This is our last topic of section two. All right. So now let me just uh, give you a short uh, overview of methods. So now why Python is important? Now it is important for us to know why do we use Python a lot? Why is Python used everywhere? Because it has a lot of methods. It has a lot of methods where we can use Python. Okay. So what I have created? I have created st and I have stored it as a string. st is storing a string. Hello, my name is Sam. All right. So now, if I tell my string that just use this function dot uh, dot lower method, what is this? What it will do? If I had any uppercase letter in my string st, it will just convert it into lower. So let me just give you short uh, like example. So see, I used hello my with y as capital. So what if I run this cell? If I run it, and then if I run my st dot lower, what will happen? It will convert the capital y into small y. Very easy. Likewise, we have dot upper function, which will be converting my all the lower case and upper case into upper case. Very easy, very simple, and easy to understand. Similarly, we have a fun, we have a method of dot split. If you are not aware of dot split, it is very easy. What it will do, wherever you have created a space, wherever you have created a space, mark my words. If I said hello space my space name, it will be splitting those terms and it will be creating a list. So you can see if I run this cell, what will happen? Hello, my name is Sam. Is being split into uh, different terms. So I hope you got this split method. Is it convenient for everyone? Just write yes or no. 
yes very easy very easy very easy all right so now if someone asks why only space what if i want to split my terms with uh, any other variable with any term with any number very easy no need to worry this variable tweet is storing my string go sports has uh, exclamation space hashtag sports so now what am i doing i am doing tweet dot split and over here i am passing across which i want to split my string so what am i passing i'm passing this string hashtag make sure what am i passing i'm passing the string hashtag so what will happen in tweet dot split function wherever it will find a hashtag it will it will separate the string it will break the string into different list so over here what will happen go sports hashtag space will be first part and then as soon as it found a string as soon as, soon as it found the um, hashtag it will be splitting into another word okay very simple very basic so now we all know that this is a list and if you remember we can iterate through a list very easy so what will be tweet split on splitting it with hashtag and if we want to implement if we want to iterate to the first index this is the zeroth index make sure this is the zeroth index and this is the first index so what will be the first index yes it will be sports so if i run the cell it will give me the output sports very easy very simple okay so now if you remember dictionary if you remember dictionary if you remember dictionary what we made we already created a dictionary all right so this b word had like uh it was pre-built, like uh, pre-built, sorry, uh, like we already created this uh, dictionary in our system. If you remember, does everyone remember the dictionary? Yes or no? All right, all right, very good, very good. All right, so we already had this B as a dictionary which was stored. So now, what if I want to print the keys of the dictionary? We all knew that what we were storing, we were storing key pair values in our dictionary. What we were storing, we were storing key pair values of dictionary. And what if someone says that just give me all the keys which are there in my dictionary? Very simple method, d dot keys. D dot keys will print me all the dictionary keys which were present. So it had key one, key two. That will be implementing. This method will be implemented and it will pass on the keys. Now what if someone says pass me the items? No need to worry. No need to worry. Instead of using D dot keys or you have to pass the key name, just use D dot item. As simple as that. D dot item will give me the items which were there with the key. So key one was storing item one, key two was storing item two. Very simple and very easy as that. So I hope you all remember list. We were storing it with square brackets and we are storing numbers one, two, three in our list. All right. So let's run this cell. And what is this? List dot pop. Does anyone know what will happen if I just implement the cell list dot pop? Yes, very good. It will delete. It will delete the last element. It will pop out the last element of our list. So let me just run this cell. What is happening? List dot pop is deleting the last element over here. List dot pop is deleting the last element. What if I rerun this cell? Okay, so now tell me what will be the answer? What if I rerun this cell? What will be my output? 2, 2, 1, 2. Okay, so let me just rerun this cell. And here we go. What I got my output? I got 2. Because the list had 1, 2, 3. I used list.pop which removed 3 permanently. And then again, I used list.pop, which removed two. So make sure to handle list.pop carefully because you might get some error if you rerun the cell again and again. Now list.append, you all know, list.append. So now what if I print list? Now what I did, I used one, two, three as my list. And then I used pop function. I used pop method twice. And now I am appending five. So what will be my new list? Let's see who will get the right answer. All right, you have already stayed. Okay, okay. One, five. Yes, yes, yes. Very easy, very easy. All right. So this list will be containing the numbers one and five. So now, okay. So now let's uh, see the uh, another method. What is uh, the same that if I want to check, if I want to check whether a term, whether a value is present in a list or not, without using for loop, without iterating inside a loop, I want to check that whether this term is there or not. What will I do? Very simple. Just a English word term, x in the list, x in list. Is x there in the list? No, 
X is not there because this list is containing the numbers one, two, and three. So what if I just run this? It will give me false. It will give me a Boolean value. So now X in a list consisting of X, Y, Z, what will it give me? It will give me just write in the comment section. Yes, very easy, very easy, very easy, guys. It will give me true. So this was the end of section two. I hope everybody enjoyed and I hope everybody understood the concept uh, till now. So we now we will be jumping on to the next important concept. All right. All right. So this concept is error handling. Now, what does it say? What what intuition do you get when you listen this term? When you listen, when you when somebody says error handling, you all know that whenever we run a Python code, we do get errors. But what if you can handle those error in, in your convenient way, in a most convenient way? So this is what error handling is all about. So now let me just show you what am I doing over here? Variable equals to 10. So what am I doing? Very easy. I'm assigning my variable var equals to 10. And now I want my answer that, okay, so if you are, if you don't know that how you can take input, how you can take input from a uh, user, we will be using in input. Just write input and just pass a string. Suppose, let me just run this string for you. Let me just run this code for you all. So what is happening over here? Initially, we run variable is equals to 10. So this cell has stored variable is equals to 10. You can see a small green pointer over here. Is everybody able to see the small green pointer? Comment yes or no in the comment section if you are able to see. What does it signify? It signifies that where our code is at current state. What it did, it implemented variable is equals to 10 and then it moves to the next line answer. And now what it is doing, it is waiting for an input. It is waiting for our input. And what is the input? We have initialized input as the variable answer. So let me pass any integer for timing. If I pass five, so what is happening? Answer is equals to five. And you can see enter a number which is over here, which is the code which came over here, right? Enter a number. So this cell will get in executed this line. And what is happening next? It is showing variable divide by answer. So 10 divided by five will give me two. Let's check, just click enter. Yes, it is giving me two. It is giving me two. Very easy to understand. Now, what if I rerun this cell? I'm rerunning this cell. And instead of passing a number, instead of passing a number, I am passing any random string. Say I pass any random string. What will it give me? Let's see. Just write in the comment section. What will I get? Error. Error, 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 error. Error. Okay, so it's important for you all to know which type of error. Error is correct. Invalid literal. What is happening over here? We were using a mathematical operation variable divided by answer. So what it wanted, it wanted an integer because we initialized 10 as integer. And then we wanted an answer also to be an integer so that it will give me answer. But over here we are passing a string. So what will happen? Invalid string literal for int. All right. So now let me ask you one more question. We knew that we can pass number. We knew that we can only pass numbers in our uh, uh, as a form of answer. What if I pass zero? 10 divided by zero. Will it give me some error? Will it give me some? Uh, <laughs> yes, this is like, okay. Will it give me error or will it give me some runtime error, infinity, and what will it give? Maths error, arithmetic error. Float to data. See, it is basically when we do arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, we know that if we are using, and the best part about Python is when I said, when I wrote num is equals to 12, have I said that num, uh, have I told that num that whether the number 12 is integer or a string? I never said. The Python automatically knows, the Python variable knows what you're storing. This is the best part about Python that what you are storing already knows, the variable already know about it. Okay, so let's run this cell, enter a number zero. Let's see what we will get our output. Oh, no, it is showing error, and that error signifies that division by zero. What it is showing? Division by zero. And now, as you said, that why I was using, why it is giving me float answers. All right, I'll let you know. What if I pass any number three? So 10 divided by three, what will be its output? It's redundant. It's quite redundant if, I, if someone says that 10 divided by three is three. No one will get to know what is 10 divided by 3. It's 3. No, it's not 3. It's 3.333 until infinity. 
so this is why we use we get a float all right so now we have found the error we have found the error that if someone is using my code and if someone is inputting a string or giving an input of say zero number so these two are things where we can get error so now let's see what we can do so let's read this code so uh, what have i done i have a uh, made this code which asks a number to divide it by 10 and there are only two circumstances when this uh, error will get triggered until and unless i pass zero or i pass a string so what am i doing just like for loop if loop while loop same convention i over here i am using try and accept these are the two terms which comes handy and which are important when you use error handling so over here in error handling what we use we use try and accept so what is happening over here i use a try so it is very easy and in layman's language i'll try to i'll make you understand what am i doing first i am telling the computer try okay don't do anything just try don't do anything just try and what you want to try you have to initialize variable as 10 you have to give input you you are asking an input from a user and then give me variable by answer so far so clear what am i asking that just try just try ki tum ye kaam karke do now accept now accept okay so i'll, I'll just uh, uh, rerun i'll just show you this one accept value error we knew that if we were passing a string what type of error we were getting we were thrown a value error and this is like pre built things in python that multiple errors you can get the different type of errors you can get so what i am doing if try this agar ye kuch isme lafda hota hai then accept value error so what if let me just run this cell for y'all if i pass a string if i pass any string say dh if i pass it is not showing me that ugly red color identity error that oh my god you have done a blunder thing it is just showing me short simple line it is printing caught an exception caught any exception and what is the exception let me just write it over here so it will be easier for you uh, don't pass a string let me just rerun this code and let me just type any uh, string caught any exception don't pass a string so which is better to get a red color dirty ugly error format or just simple line which says in a clean quiet way that please change this code this is not good like uh, looking good so this was the way for string now what if zero so over here what i did i used a i used a print statement to print whatever i wanted to so now in except there is also like say suppose zero division error it is predefined in python so if i say except if zero division error is there as e i have initialized as e what is e i am want to print e so let me just show it to you all what if i write zero and then i print it is automatically showing me division by zero have i printed anything have i printed division by zero over here yes or no right yes or no in the chat section no 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 yes try and accept is much more better if you are making if you are developing something there are tons of places where you might get some error and then you will have a dilemma that which type of error why you are getting a error so it is very important for you all to use try and accept what is e this is e the output which we got as e the zero division error is stored as e and what is e e is division by zero and what am i saying print e as simple as that very easy so now with try and accept i will be adding something extra i will be adding a finally statement what is finally statement very easy no need to worry what i was doing i passed in number 10 the same method which i created then division by zero value error which i caused and i am passing another except and what is this pass pass means that nothing even if you enter this loop don't worry nothing will happen nothing is exception no need to worry finally what is finally over here so it is important for you all to know what is finally even if you get try and accept if the code block passes through try, try and accept run the finally is a mandate for the try and accept to run it is mandate for try and accept to run if i run this cell if i pass a string even if i pass a string say df i passed what will it get it will it is showing me caught any exception this is the this accept error caught any exception and then it is printing finally exit code it is printing finally this exit code if i pass what if i pass a number say 45 what if i pass 145 so
So what it is doing? Just enter a number 45 and it is exiting a code. Very simple, as easy as that. So kudos to all. We have completed a big chunk of Python guide. And now, which you all were waiting for, we will be entering the Python libraries. So the, just let me know in the comment section how many of you all know uh, what is NumPy. Have you ever heard about NumPy? Just give me yes or no. No, 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 just heard no problem, no problem. All right. So what is NumPy? <laughs> Let me give you a short intro about NumPy. NumPy is a linear li algebra library Python, which is important for data science with Python as it, it has almost a lot of libraries in PyData ecosystem, which relies on NumPy as one of the main building block. Even if you don't get this line, no need to worry. The NumPy will be, I will be explaining to it to you all. Okay, so now it is important for you all to first download NumPy. No need to worry. You don't have to go to any web server website and say install NumPy on my computer. No need to worry. Just enter the collab and just write this code. Hash, uh, this exclamation pip install NumPy. And what will it do? It will automatically install. See, I got a uh, error. I got this as required or a requirement already satisfied because my computer is already having NumPy. All right. So I won't run, rerun the cell. Even if you want, you can rerun the cell. It will just take a few minutes of time. And it will again show you this term that requirements have already been satisfied because NumPy is already there in your system. Okay. So now we have installed NumPy. We have installed our NumPy into our system. So now we, so now what we want to do, we want to use our NumPy. As soon as we have installed it, now I want to use it. So how can I use it? We know that we created nums, we created functions, we created class definition methods, lot of things we have done in our uh, code, in our course till now. So what am I doing over here? I'm saying key computer, please import numpy, please import numpy as NP. This NP is not is required. I'll let you know in some time. Why am I writing numpy as NP? This numpy is uh, this NP is a short abbreviation of numpy. If I want to write my code, if I want the word numpy, is numpy convenient or NP convenient? Just let me know in the comment section. Is numpy convenient or NP convenient? NP is convenient. All right, NP is convenient. So what am I doing over here? I am writing import numpy as NP. Very easy. So let me just run the cell. What it is doing? So it has imported numpy as NP. So numpy has inbuilt functions and all lot of things. We can use it in vectors, array matrices, number generation, a lot of things where numpy can be used. The numpy is having few properties. Like if I say about array, so it can create, it can store, it can say 1D array, 2D array, 2D matrix, anything. All right. So let's create a numpy array. Let's create a numpy array. So first, everybody remembers list, right? Everybody remembers list. So what have I done over here? I have created my list and what it is storing. It is storing numbers one, two, three in my list. What it is storing? It is storing numbers one, two, three in my list. So what if I print this list? Everybody knows what will happen. We will get one, two, three as my output. So now let's move on to NumPy. How can we use NumPy? I want to convert my list into array. I want to convert my list into array using NumPy. How will I do that? NP, this is NumPy dot array numpy.array this numpy has built in method array method which will be implemented it is built in function in numpy and what am i passing i'm passing my list what am i passing i'm passing my list so what is happening over here my list was uh, my list had one two three in the form of list and i want to convert it into an array using np.array and what if i print array so you know that list was in the form of square brackets over here you can see the array you will get the extra term array so I hope you all get it. Just write in the uh, comment section, yes or no. <laughs> you can use that, but it's a, a general convention to use NP, not any random name. All right, so we have created an array. Very simple, very easy, no need to worry. So now what if someone says, okay, so now you have created an array, convert it into a list again, no worries. So my AR had one, two, three, just you write the list and pass on the array and see one, two, three, again, back to its original form. Simple as that. No need to worry. Okay. So now we have created a one D array. We have created a one dimensional array. So now what if someone asks me, tells me that create a two dimensional array. 
create a two dimensional array so what is happening over here make sure to follow the brackets what am i passing over here i am passing a i am passing my matrix a list of lists of different lists let me repeat myself what is this my matrix my matrix is a big list which has three different lists did everyone get that just write yes or no did everyone got that that uh, what uh, what is this my matrix is having yes okay so what is happening over here and now someone tells me now convert it into array okay we will follow the basic rule which we already learned that in 1d array what we will do we will be using np dot array and my matrix so let me just run this cell for you all so you can see it has created a 2d array make sure to check the square brackets there are two square brackets in front of this and over here we only had one square bracket which signifies that this one square bracket is a 1d array and this two square brackets are a 2d array easy simple now someone tells me to convert it into uh, into a list again so what if i run this cell what if i run this cell oh my god i am not getting the desired output the list which i passed i passed it in the form of list of list but when i am using list of arr it is not giving me the required output what it is giving it is giving me list of arrays it is giving me list of arrays let me repeat myself it is list of arrays this one is one first array second array third array so now someone is telling me to convert this entire array into list i don't want arrays i want 1 2 3 as one list 4 5 6 as another list 7 8 9 as another list no worry again python has a inbuilt function used arr dot to list and just run this cell very easy 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 9 just as you wanted use dot to list function now again if you want you can just do random method here and there okay so now let's move on to some built in methods so now as we knew that we had arrange we had for loops while loops so in numpy also we had few uh, built in methods which numpy offers to us i hope everybody got this point of uh, to list function list function just write yes or no in the comment section Okay, I will be coming to its part of reshaping, resizable. Ishana Grewal, just wait for a minute. Okay, okay. So let's let's continue. Okay, okay. All right. So let's move on to arrange. Arrange. What is arrange? Return evenly spaced value with a given interval. Remember, we had a range. Just write yes or no if you remember. We used a range, range five. Yes, yes. You all have a good memory, it seems. Very good. so over here what is happening we are using np dot arrange 0 to 10 what is happening we are using np dot arrange 0 to 10 and again 10 includes 10 exclusive so what is happening it is passing me an array of 0 to 9 it is passing me an array of 0 to 9 now someone tells me that i don't want 0 to 9 i want 0 to 4 6 with an interval of 2 very easy np has np has everything right np says that np dot arrange instead of passing 0 10 see why i have wrote 11 because i want to add 10 in my array 0 to 10 and give me a space give me a ident of 2 what it is happening give me skips of 2 it will start from 0 the next element is 1 the next th the second element is 2 so what i want skip 1 skip the second element again and again so skip 1 skip 3 skip 5 so if i run this cell i will get 0 to 10 all even numbers very easy very simple very basic so now someone tells me okay so now here comes a uh, very general topics about numpy that why do we use numpy and why is numpy very important okay so if you want to create zeros of arrays if you want to create 100 zeros what will you do just tell me what will you do you will either create a list empty list and then you will append zeros you might use list comprehension you might use a for loop numpy is everything numpy says that np dot zeros pass the size 3 it will be creating a array of zeros of size 3 isn't it cool np dot zeros and then uh, uh, 3 okay np dot arrange repeat okay no problem i'll just repeat np dot arrange what it is saying that np dot arrange will be just like it's just like range which we studied earlier np dot arrange will give me number 0 to 11 which i am saying it will it will be storing my number 0 to 11 in an array and what am i saying that give me a skips of 2 if i what if i write 3 what if i write 3 you will get a better understanding what if i write 3 what will happen 0 3 6 9 because it was starting from 0 it skipped 1 2 and directly jumped to 
it skipped four five it directly jumped to six then it directly jumped to nine is it clear okay so you 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 have to use a comma to separate the function will know that what you want to pass okay so you can just 0 11 3 the function will not understand what you are passing at least you have to pass a comma to let the function know that okay you are passing three different terms all right so just like zeros what if i want to create a 2d array 2d array of zeros make sure to look check out the brackets you have to, if you want to create a 2d array you have to pass two brackets 5 comma 5 will give me a number of uh, np dot zeros of size 5 cross 5 just like zeros you have ones just like ones 1d arrays you can create a 2d arrays of ones very easy till now lin space what is lin space this is a important like this is a very good concept which i feel that you should know what is happening return every space number over a specified interval i repeat myself return even the space number over a specified interval so if i say that give me a number between two and six that should be evenly spaced so what will be the answer <laughs> this is just the beginning of uh, libraries this is just the basic library numpy if you go deep into python you will find you will find tons of libraries which are there all right very easy two for six very easy very easy right so what am I saying over here? 0 to 10 and give me three space numbers. So let me just print it out. What it will print? It will print 0, the first number, 5, and then 10. As simple as that. Even if you want to increase your scope, if I say np.lin space 0 to 10 and give me 50 numbers. Give me 50 numbers in between 0 to 1. No need to worry. NumPy is very easy. See, you will get the 50 numbers, 0. If you have enough time, if you have enough uh, resistance, so you can add all these numbers and you can check with that whether it's correct. But I can guarantee, I can assure that yes, it is correct. So don't need to worry. All right. So now let's move on to next uh, important uh, next function. Like basically, it creates an identity matrix. Anyone who knows what is identity matrix? How much is left today? This is probably the second last topic, and then we will be covering. Oops. So we'll come to an end. Okay yes yes okay okay so it's basically very simple it is just a diagonal of ones and rest everything is zero numpy knows it numpy knows that you might use identity matrix so it has created it for you np dot i and just write the number four so what it is doing it is creating a four cross four matrix it is creating a four cross four matrix where all the diagonals are one and rest everything is zero simple no need to worry now okay so now let's move on uh, what is random numpy dot random random is basically the uh, why we use random if you want to create random numbers as simple as that as simple as that so let me just show you this code np dot random we have imported numpy np dot random function dot rand what is this it creates an array of given shape and postulate and it randomly uh, uh, populates it with a number from a uniform distribution of 0 to 1 no need to worry what it is doing np dot random dot random numbers give me two random numbers what if i say three it will be printing me three random numbers between zero to one very basic very simple what if i say give me a list give me a 2d array of random numbers very easy np dot random dot rand very easy you will get five all these 25 numbers will be between zero to one now what is rand n initially we studied np dot random dot rand this is np dot random dot rand n so rand n will return a sample from the standard normal distribution across 0 to 1 what i meant to say standard normal distribution does anyone know about standard normal distribution it is like a statistical term if you check the graph what is happening over here this is your axis you can see this is your axis the standard normal distribution will be a curve which will have a peak at 0 and the rest it will be having a standard distribution across both the axes so this is just a small intro uh statistical information so what am i saying just give me some uh, random uh, six numbers so what is happening it is giving me six random numbers which are uh, real, which are very close to zero like i want a numbers random numbers which are close to zero so similarly you can do it for two cross two arrays very easy rand int so now if someone asks me give me a random number between 40 and 50 np.random.randint 
just pass a low value key value exclusive make sure this key value is exclusive just rerun this cell over here i will get a number 94 rerun this cell again you will get a different output np.random.rin okay so over here 1 comma 10 and now uh, someone is asking me give me 10 distinct uh, 10 unique numbers between 1 to 100 just run this cell you will get 10 numbers between 1 to 100 very easy very simple okay so now were you tired of typing np.random.randint what if i uh, what uh, what if i say that you can just write it using randint very easy we all know that we imported numpy so now what am i telling to computer from numpy.random from numpy.random import randint directly import randint for me so instead of instead of writing numpy.random.randint what i what i can do basically if i write randint and if I pass my required variables, uh, 1, 10, 100, it will be printing me 10 distinct numbers from 1 to 100. Very easy, as simple as that. No need to worry. Okay, so now let's move on to the next topic. I hope everybody got this concept of random and everything. Just say yes or no in the comment section. All right, all right. Very good, very good. Okay, so now we will be moving to the next topic. That is array attributes and methods array attributes and methods so what is this so we all know that np dot arrange random we all know that what it is happening over here so what i have done i've created an array of uh 0 to 25 0 to 25 25 being exclusive so this is my array which i have created and what is ran arr that is ran np dot random dot random 0 to 50 10 uh, numbers uh randomly chose between 0 to 50 right this is easy this is good now if i say i want to reshape it I want to reshape it. This ARR was a 1D array of 25 numbers. This ARR was a 1D array of 25 numbers. So can I convert it into a 2D array of 5 cross 5? Say yes or no. See, it's uh, how computer works and how it is working. It's all Python. It's all NumPy. No need to worry. You don't have to think why it is working how you, you just take the benefits of it that yes we are getting our output and if you want to study about why it is working you can definitely go to site and you can just type np.random you will get a good documentation about it that how it is working and what is the math behind it okay rand arr again so what am i doing over here np.random.randint what have i done np.random.randint and i am passing zero as my low value 50 as my upper value and 10 random numbers that I want to generate. So what is happening over here? Ran ARR is generating 10 random numbers between 0 to 50. You got it? You Everybody got it? Till now? Very good. So now let's move on to reshape. What is happening over here? If R had, R basically had a numbers, a 1D array from 0 to 24, right? So now someone says me that convert this 1D array into 2D array. Very easy. I will be using arr.reshape and pass the required size which I want. So what I want, arr.reshape, make sure arr.reshape and the required size. I want a size of 5 cross 5. So 5 comma 5, once I print this, once I run this code, okay, I have not initialized it, uh, I have not uh, run this cell. So let me just run this cell for you all. So see, we have got our desired output 1, 4. So this list, first one is storing 1, 2, 4, 5 numbers, and then 5 numbers. Very easy, very basic. So, okay, so just see, we already knew that this RAN ARR uh, had this numbers of arrays. So now if someone tells me what is the maximum value, very easy, very simple. R, uh, the variable the which you have initialized, dot max will give me number. Over here we had 49, so it will give me 49 R max. What is R max? It will give me the index of maximum value. Let me just run it again for you all. So over here, what is the maximum value? 49. Arg max. What is the index of 49? Zeroth index. 49 is present at the zeroth index. Similarly for min, what is the minimum value and what is the index? Very easy. Is it complicated? See, 4, 4, don't get confused. The index of 4, it is talking about index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see 4 is at the fourth index following the zero uh, index rule. Okay. So now this one more topic shape, this is very easy and very related to each other. We created an array of shape of size, say 25. We used np.arr like, uh, and used arrange function to create 25 numbers. Okay. So what if I say, what is the shape of it? If, even if I created, I want to know the shape. So 
can you tell me why i have not used this why i have not used this brackets why have i only used arr dot shape does anyone know about it yes it is shape is an attribute that array have it is not a method don't get confused this is just very like these these functions like shape and all are very few in topics you will get to know once and all you coding you will eventually get to know that why it is there why it is there okay so now what am i saying i have reshaped it into one cost to uh, 25 so what is this see initially uh, my array had numbers from 0 to 24 i can reshape it into size of 5 cross 5 because we know 5 cross 5 will be containing 25 numbers i can also reshape it into the size 1 cross 25 what am i doing i am reshaping it into the size of 1 cross 25 and now what if i print arr dot shape so now ARR dot shape will give me 1 cross 25 is it cool is it very easy so now what if someone says no not i don't want 1 cross 25 i want 25 cross 1 okay no worries i will do it for you all 1 cross 25 see 25 numbers printed and then if someone asks me uh, what is ARR dot shape 25 cross 1 what if someone says me ARR dot resize and if say 6 comma 7 it will throw you an error because 6 comma 7 will be requiring how many numbers it will be requiring 6 into 7 numbers that is 42 but we only had 25 numbers so it will be throwing an error you have to pass exact number of elements into our reshape size all right okay so now if you want to check again like d type it is also a attribute which array which uh, python has so if i say arr dot d type what it is showing it is showing int because what we were doing we were showing integers in our array right so now we will move to the next section numpy indexing and selection now why numpy is important and why do we use numpy this is the most important section of numpy so make sure to pay attention has everybody followed uh, the topics till now just say yes or no in the comment section yes 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 okay okay so what is numpy indexing and selection all right so now we will discuss how to select elements or groups or an element from an array what is happening ARR is storing np dot arrange 0 to 11 so what will be np ARR it will be numbers from 0 to 10 all right it will be storing numbers from 0 to 10 so you can see the numbers which are storing 0 to 10 so now what if someone says that give me some uh, nth value if i say this is the 0th index first index so if i say that select a value of index so ARR dot 8 will be 8 0 1 2 3 4 5 you can go till 8 so you can just say 8 so Every, does someone remember in a list, we had a list of A, B, C, D and we wanted B, C, D. What convention did we use? We had a list A, B, C, D and if we want to print B, C, D. Very good. Excellent, excellent. Very good. The same convention will be followed over here. Yes, the same convention will be followed over here. As simple as that. If you want, if we want to get the values in a range, so what will ARR 1, 1 colon 5 will give me? ARR 1 inclusive, 5 exclusive. So we I, uh, generated an array of 0 to 10. So the first index is 1. The first index is 1. 0 index is 0. The first index is 1. And the fifth being exclusive, the fourth index will be taken into consideration and we will get our answer as 1, 2, 3, 4. Everybody got it? I will be showing you one more example of 0 to 5. If I print 0 to 5, what will I get? I will be getting numbers from 0 to 4. Easy? Very good. Very good. Good response. Great, guys. You are learning at a very good speed. Very good, guys. Okay, so now let's move to another topic, broadcasting. So in list, we knew that we could have easily changed the numbers if I had a list A, B, C, D. And if I want to add a new term, say a uh, say word uh, string new, what we did, we basically went to the list. We said that list, the zeroth index, add the string and remove it, the later one. So, pehle tha usko nikal do, aur wale ko dal do. Similarly, in array, we can do the same thing. We know that our array was of size 10. So, make sure don't go outside the boundary. If you say 0 to 20, it will throw you an error because array had a size of 0 to 10. So, make sure what we are doing, 0 to 5th index, we are initializing it with 100. We are saying that 0 to 4th index, 5 being inclusive, 5 being exclusive, 5 being exclusive till 4th index, take it and change it to 100. What if I print it? So once I print it, what am I getting? 0, 0th index, 1st index, 3rd index, 4th index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The 5th index 
is storing the number 100 and rest all remains the same. Again, we can use that arrange function to what if, uh, let me just uh, revert it back to 0 to 10. So this is our function. I hope you have got how you can use broadcasting over here. Just give me yes or no in the chat section. All right, all right, all right. So let's continue. So now, as we studied broadcasting, now the important topics come. Now the important topic is appearing. Slicing of array. Slicing of array. Basically, we want a chunk of array. We knew that we could have already done using broadcasting. We can say that one, say two, and just remove, you just remove that segment of array and just give it to me. What if I say I want a slice of a 2D array? What if I want a slice of a 2D array? So how can we do it? So over here, first, let me just show you for 1D example, the which array which we already created 0 to 10. What am I doing? Just uh, run the cell. So this will give me 0 to 5. Very easy, very easy to understand. All right. So this is change of slice. What is change slice? Now I am, so just tell me what 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 is this function doing? I am saying slice of array. Then I am pass, passing just a single colon. What will it do? What will it do if I pass just a single colon? How many elements will it very good it will travel the entire list it will travel the traverse the entire list let me just run this code for you all 99 99 99 very easy everyone got it so now let's come to the most important part okay so okay 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 so i had one thing in my mind so if someone can ask me my array had 0 1 2 3 4 5 and who said that you can change it or you can convert you can broadcast into 100 where is my original array where did it go why how you can do this so instead of doing that, what you can do, you can create a copy of it. You can create a copy of it by using arr.copy. I am creating a variable arr copy and initializing it with arr.copy. What is dot copy method? Suppose we had our initial arr at 12345 and then we are using arr.copy. So what is arr.copy? It will be storing my current arr. So we have done a lot of changes. We have done a lot of implementations of AR on arr. So let me just see what is actually arr right now. It is 99, 99, 99, and 6 till 10, we are using error. So what am I doing? I am creating ARR.copy. So this ARR.copy will be storing this uh, previous ARR. So now we can do anything with our ARR. Nothing will happen to our ARR copy, right? So now the thing which I was talking about, indexing a 2D matrix and then taking a slice of it. So did everyone get this concept? Five, what am I doing over here? I'm creating a 2D array of 5, 10, 15. 20, 25, 30, and 35, 40, 45. And just let just print me the array to just show me the 2D array. So here's the 2D array. So what if I say, what if I say that I want the first index? What will be the first index of a 2D array? It will be the first index, the list which is present at the first index. If I write ARR 2D0, it will give me 5, 10, 50. ARR 2D1, it will give me 20, 25, 30. ARR2 will give me 35, 40, 45. Is it clear? Just write yes or no in the chat section. Yes, second row. Very good. Yes. Okay, so let me just print it for you all. So we have got ARR2D. Now, if someone says that give me 20, very easy as we have iterated through the list, what we have to do? ARR10. Very simple and basic to understand. ARR10. So everybody got it. Right. So now, getting an individual element so instead of writing one and then again a bracket what if i say that i can just write it in a one bracket isn't it convenient and easy see how things are getting easier as you go on ahead and ahead as you progress through python see the things are getting easier and easier just let me run this code for you one comma zero will give me the first and the zero no, first list ka zero with index very easy okay so now let's come to 2d slicing what if Okay, so just just give uh, just uh, uh, give me a code. Don't look now. If I say that you have to give me 10, 15, 25, 30. If you want 10, 25, 30. So what will you do? How will you slice? We knew that for our 1D array, what we can do, you, we can initialize a colon and we can pass the left index and the right index. What if I want a slice of a 2D array? Okay. One, one. Okay, so let me just show. It is con uh, it is quite confusing. So what we can do over here, we are just make sure that how I am using this convention. 
Okay, don't get confused. What am I doing over here? What am I doing? I am passing array 2D and then what am I doing? I am passing this. What is this? Just if you if you see in our array 10, 15, 25, 30, first try to locate it where it is in our array. It is 10, 15, 25, 30. I hope you all can see this 10, 15, 25, 30. Now what is happening over here? We want the two rows. We can see these are are known as rows and these are known as columns we want the second column we want the first two rows what do we want we want the first two rows and we want the last two columns we want the first two rows and the last two columns i hope you all get it just right yes or no in the chat section it's too much to digest in a one day as a beginner no worries you can just re-watch this session you will get the python notebook even if you feel it's too much don't worry it's all easy did you find guys did you find anything very difficult very uh, like it was like it went all bouncer for your head from your head just let me know that whether it was very difficult for you to understand python no yes it is not it is very easy this is a workshop this like yes it was very easy it is very easy and see the things these are such complicated things which are explained in such an easier way that you can implement it so now just let me show you how you can do what we wanted. We want the first two rows and the first two columns. All right. So what is happening over here? Whenever we used a 2D slicing, we have to pass two inputs. We have to use a comma. What does this comma uh, signifies? It signifies that you are separating rows and columns. In this column over here, nothing column two. What will it? What is it? What it is saying? It is saying that I want two rows, zero and first row, two being exclusive. Two being exclusive, I want zero and the first row, comma, first and second row column. Did you all get this? Did you all get this? Yes, logic is very easy to understand. You will get it after the session ends. Very easy. It's very easy. Let me show you some few more examples. If I say I want a slice, if I say I want 30, 40, 50. So basically, this is a basic two. If I say two, you will be getting this. What if I want to print this? what if i want to print this without using slicing i can use this just try to understand what am i doing over here i am passing two that is the second row the second row and entire column did you all get this the second row and entire column all the three columns so if you take the intersection of second row second row and the entire column what you will get you will get the numbers yes so you will get the numbers over here so this was all about slicing. So this uh, this is a topic fa fancy indexing, which is like uh, quite convenient if you want to use, if you don't want to use, but I will just give you a short overview about it. I won't go much deep into it. So what it is, np.0s, what am I doing? I'm just storing uh, np.0s, you all know, uh, 2D array. So let me just print the shape. Okay, so this is my 2D array. What am I doing over here? I'm iterating through array. And what am I doing? Array of i equals to i array of i equals to i i am changing i i'm basically i went through my array and i'm initializing it i'm changing it all right so now, now let's move on to so okay so these are all the topics uh in the for loop or uh, in the fancy indexing okay so now let's move on to one important topic selection why do we use selection okay so this is like we will be finishing off with numpy this is the last section of numpy the selection and there will be the last and the most basic topic and that will be our end to our python guide okay so let's just wait for some few more time and we will be finishing with our entire python guide then i will be explaining then i will be giving you something very interesting and there will be a short surprise for you all so let's see what is selection let's briefly go over how to use brackets for selection so what am i doing over here i am using np dot arrange one to eleven what is this i'm basically initializing a 1d array of one to ten easy simple and now array greater than four what is this very this is like if even if i say to a, a person who does not know any python programming language what will it say that i have an array and then what am i doing array greater than four what is happening it is iterating through the array and if it, it is saying array of first index one is greater than false one is greater than four false two is greater than four false three is greater than four false when it will say two five greater than false True. five greater than four true you can see very easy now i can also store it in some array instead of just you're writing it commenting it like this i can store the bool array and you will get the bool array output over here and if i say give me the array of numbers 
which had bool array. Give me the array of numbers which hold the condition array greater than four. Just write it into another array. Just print it, and you will get this uh, required output. Okay, so I have to just implement this cell. I just forgot to re run this cell. This is the bool array which I got. Okay, so now if someone says that uh, array, uh, just a second, I have to uh, initialize it from here. See, array it was stored the previous array ninety nine one. If you remember. So what is happening? It is just giving me five, six, seven, eight, nine because these were the arrays which were greater than four. If someone says array greater than two, you can simply say three to ten. Very easy. If you can, if instead of passing a number, you can also pass a variable array greater than x. So this is the last topic of uh, NumPy arithmetic operations. It is very easy. We know that we could have done basic arithmetic operations with variables. One plus one, x plus y, two plus three. Similarly, we can do the same operations with array. Just make sure the array which you are using have a similar shape and size. They have, they are having a similar shape and size. You can perform any operations. Array which I have created over here. Again, the same array which I have created. Let me just uh, write ARR plus ARR. So this is quite easy. ARR into ARR, ARR minus ARR. So ARR minus ARR will be giving me zero one. Just a second. Just a second. Okay. So what if I write ARR divided by ARR? ARR divided by ARR. What will I get? Just a second, guys. I'm back, guys. What will I get if I write ARR divided by ARR? Okay. So ARR by ARR. We knew that we initialized our array from zero. So. We know that zero divided by zero. What will what will it be? In Python, instead of giving us a red big error, it will just simply give me a nan. You can see ARR divided by ARR. When I implemented zero to ten, what is happening? Zero divided by zero, one divided by zero. For all the other integers, we are getting one. But what is zero divided by zero? It is giving me nan. It is giving me nan. That is a redundant value. And now, what if someone tells me what is one divided by zero? What will Python give me over there? Shall it, will it give me nan? Or will it give me something else? Just write in the comment section. What will I get if I write one divided by zero when I am traversing through array? Error, 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 error. Guys, to your note, we will not get any error. We will be getting infinity. So, if I say one divided by array, what it is happening? It is traversing through the array and it is performing all the operations. One, one by zero, one by one, one by two, and it is giving me infinity. Is it clear? So array into array power by three again very basic very easy. So just like array just like these operations, NumPy has universal array operations. Like if I want to take square root of array, np NumPy please import square root for me. Np dot sqrt is a name for square root and tell me that np dot sqrt array. If you use this, the entire array square root will be over here. Exp that is exponential. E power x exponential. So just give me np dot exponential of array. So we know that the first index was zero. So zero power uh, e power zero one. E power one two point seven one. So I hope you get this concept. Arr np dot max arr same as arr. What is the maximum value in our array will be returned. Sine. If you remember trigonometry, we had the trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tangent. Np numpy has all. Okay, numpy has it all. So I have to just import np dot sign and I have to pass the array. Similarly for log, np dot log. Again, see np dot log. Can someone tell me what is log of zero? What is log of zero? Okay, okay. Negative infinity. Very good, very good, very good. Negative infinity and Python says yes, we are giving negative infinity. But still, it is throwing me a runtime warning. It is saying dividing by zero encoded in log n. So it is saying that there is some error, but we will we are considering it and we are just giving you minus infinity. But make sure you don't do this error again, okay? So just check it. So guys, this was the end of our big section and chunk of uh, NumPy. This is the last topic: object-oriented programming. Just give a thumbs up. Uh, how was the session by far? This is a very small topic which I will be covering in 10-20 minutes, and that will be the end of our section. That will be end of our Python guide. I hope everybody enjoyed till now. All right, all right. Okay, so it's ha ha pakka bhai. Okay, guys. So let's move on to the last topic. 
this is the most important topics and buckle up your belts because this is the topic which you will be using a lot a lot a lot as a developer as a, a machine learning engineer as a software engineer as a django flash react engineer anything wherever you say the object oriented programming is there and this is not just in python it is also there in other various languages like c++ java everywhere it is there so what is object oriented programming languages python is a it has some few theories so let me just give me some time to just explain you all the theory then we will be directly jumping into the code it has a very basic and minimal code as we all know that python is very beginner friendly easy to code easy to learn easy to remember just let me give you a short summary about object oriented programming python is a multi paradigm programming language and it supports different programming approaches one of the popular approaches is to solve programming by creating objects don't worry i will be explaining attributes behavior objects everything for you all so now let me take an example what is happening what is object oriented programming we are creating object and we are creating class so let me give you an example a parrot is an object so just just uh, just bear with me a parrot is an object and it has following properties so a parrot is an object and it has following properties all right so what is happening over here that it has following properties like name age color as attributes singing dancing as behavior as a person what you have you have your age you have your name you have your hair color okay so what are your behavior you might be like uh, very studious you might be very joyful you like to play games you like to do singing dancing so see these are behavior so now what is happening over here we were in python right we were talking about object oriented programming how uh, how we directly shifted into some personality test don't worry this is just an example a parrot is an object okay don't remember okay remember this the concept of poop in python focuses on creating reusable code so remember guys i talked about functions i talked about lambda expressions what it was doing it was reusing that code again and again it was reusing that code again and again similarly in object oriented programming when you are creating a big function where you have a lot of functions inside of it so in create instead of creating different function what if i create a big class and inside a class what if i define different functions won't it be convenient for everyone to use if i create a class and in that class i am creating functions will it be convenient or not just write yes or no all right so it will be convenient right so let's see what is a class okay uh, now now i said about classes objects method uh, itni sari cheeze but let me what is a class very easy how to initialize a class class is a blueprint for a object basically what is happening over here see that i have created a class very easy to understand class basic uh, type def function class space the class name which you want to create and a colon which the python and again the ident don't forget to push the ident and what is pass pass is just like empty it is an empty class which i have created for time being okay so now what is happening here we use the class keyword to define an empty class parrot over here the the class is empty because i have just used the class okay so we will be filling it out the objects and everything we will be filling so from class we can construct instances we can construct various things so we will be moving on so what is object okay so now let's start objectify objectifying things so we are saying that object is equal to parrot okay so what is happening over here what is happening object instance is an instantiation of instance instantiation of the class when class is defined over here we are defining a class parrot and now if i am saying that in a city there are a lot of parrots right if i say that in a city there are a lot of parrots what if i want to uh, like take 10 parrots and i then i want to uh, uh initialize its name age color whether it it the uh, singing dancing so will it be convenient for me if i create a big class and then i will be creating different objects for parrot, uh, for this parrot so what is happening i am creating object is equal to parrot don't forget don't forget to put this uh, uh brackets because this is very important because this signifies that you are calling our class and you are creating an object okay so now let's move on to the big chunk of code don't get worry i will i will be explaining everything to you all what is happening over here we have created a class now this class is not empty over here you can see two functions which i have created don't worry i will be explaining everything to you all def check so what is happening we are creating a function def with a check and what is this self don't worry i will be explaining it to you all no need to worry i am passing something okay i am passing something into my function okay and this something is self over here and i'm creating another function that is def config and i'm passing self i'm passing name i'm passing age i'm passing self i'm passing name and i'm passing age 
then now what am I doing? I'm initializing name to name, self dot age to age and print name and age. Don't worry if you don't get the concept of self, I will be explaining just later on, just wait for a few time, few time. So now this is my class. Everybody got it that I have created a class just right. Yes or no? Don't worry. I will be explaining it. I will be explaining it. Okay. So you got the concept that I have created a class and I have implemented two functions inside it. All right. Cool. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is cool. So now what happened? I have created two functions, def fun, uh, def uh, object and def config. And now I created an object. I created a object of class parrot. Everybody got it till now because don't see these are things are quite tricky to understand, but this is very simple, very basic. And in a layman's language, I'm trying to explain it to you all that you, you will get all the concepts clear. Now, what is happening over here? I am calling this class parrot. The name of the class was parrot and I'm calling parrot dot check parrot dot check. So it will go inside this class parrot and it will check that is it a, a function which has a name check? Yes, it is there. What is it? It is asking. It is asking for something. Okay. It is asking for self. So what we are doing, we are just passing this object into it. We are passing the object into it. Is it simple? Did, did you all get this? Did you all get this? Yes, this is basically the constructor which we use in C++ and Java, but uh, let's not confuse everyone. I will be talking about it. Did you all get this concept till now that I have, what, what is this line? What does this line say that I am iterating to this class parrot. I'm going to dot check function and then I want an object. Then I'm passing the object into it. Sa same way I am passing parrot dot config. So it will go inside the class parrot. It will check for config. And then it will check and I, over here I have to pass three things. I have to pass self name and age. So let me just pass the object as self, the name as birdie and let its age be five. So what will happen if I print it? Let me just run the cell for y'all. What will I get over here? When I implemented parrot dot check, what it did, it went parrot check and it printed the check. So you can see in the output, it got one check statement. Did you all get this? Did you all get this? How we got this check? Just write yes or no in the comment section. Okay, okay, cool. So now what is happening? Now the next line says that parrot.config object body five. Now it will it is going over here. Don't get confused. I will be explaining these two lines. Don't get confused. I will be explaining these two lines. Just bear with me. What is happening over here? It is printing name and age. So what is happening over here? We are printing name and age. So let me just rerun the cell. The, the first output will be the check which we uh, implemented for this. And the second one is parrot.config, which will be implementing birdie and five. Did you all get this till now? Just write yes or no. Did you all get this concept? Okay, okay, I'll repeat it again here. Okay, so what is happening over here? We went to class, we called the, we checked the function, if it is there or not, and then we passed our object. So what if someone says me, that bhaiya, why we have to pass the object again and again? Is it a simpler way? by not passing the object. Can we do that? Just write yes or no. If you think that, is it a simpler way? I will be explaining self, self wala concept. Just, do, just wait for a minute. Okay. So what is happening over here? Let me just uncomment this part of code. What is happening over here? We created an object parrot. So what is object? OBJ is an object of parrot class and we can directly go object dot check. Now, what if I run this cell? What will be my output object dot check and object object dot config? What will be my required? What will be my output? Just let me know what will be my output. Let's see who gets the right answer. Same. Okay, so let's run this cell. Let's run this. Yes, it is giving me the same answer. But if I say if I go and check object dot check. If I find the check function, it is asking me for a variable. It is asking me for an input self. Have I, have I passed a, any input in my object dot check? Have I passed it? Yes or no? No, no. So now here comes the concept of self. So guys, you all were waiting for this concept. Now let me tell you what is happening over here and why these two lines are different from these two lines. Initially, we were how we were passing how we were iterating just check that we were calling class then we were calling the function and then we were passing our object what we were doing we were classing the class we were passing the class we were checking the function and then we were passing the object over here what we are doing we are directly 
passing from object what is happening object dot check what it is doing object dot check object is a pre-built uh, we have created an object over here it is going inside the parrot and it is checking check and what is self over here the self is the object which is already being passed so there is no need to pass object inside of it did you all get this point there's no need to pass object again when you call from object this might uh, seem something confusing but it is very easy for you all to understand if you get the concept of objects why we are creating object what is the use of object why we want to create object this is the only reason why we want to create object because we want to simplify our things we want to simplify our things what is happening over here we can directly use objects while object dot check object is a ob, uh, obj is the object that we created of class parrot obj is a object of class parrot what it is doing that obj is iterating inside the class and it is checking for check function and that obj is passed over here that obj is passed over here this is our obj did you all get this yes or no just write in the comment section yes yes similarly what is happening over here obj dot config birdie and five we are passing just two variables but over here it required three variables what is self self is again the obj which is being passed so again this code will not give me any error did you all get this why am I not passing OBJ again in this? Just write yes or no. Huh, if you don't write self, then again and again, you have to pass object and all. But this gets, uh, this is not a good convention. This is not a good practice if you are using oops in Python. This is not a good uh, way to approach to write oops. OK, so did you all get this? So this was basic. So now what is happening? This is the last topic which we will be covering in oops, the init function. What is init function? So now what happened over here? We did obj dot check and it found check. Okay. So then it implemented its code. Now what is happening over here? I have created def and this init. This init is a pre-built function in Python. So you cannot change it. It is like double underscore init and double underscore check. This is this function init is called automatically. As soon as you call class as soon as you create obj of class parrot and you run obj without doing anything what will happen it will first print called automatically because it will enter inside it it says that kuch bhi ho jai, pehle to init run karwana hai kuch bhi ho jai, pehle to init run karwana hai baki ka dekh lenge. in a layman's language this is what is happening inside it so i have used init now what is happening i am creating two objects blue and woo. I have created two objects blue and woo. Did you all get this? I can create multiple objects as it does not require any space. I can create n number of objects. So what I have done, I have created two objects blue and woo of class parrot. Did you all get this? Yes or no? Yes. So what if I run this cell? Have I called any function for blue and woo? Have I called any function? Have I called check or config? No, I have not called. So let me just run this cell. What will happen? Even if I have initialized blue and woo, it is automatically printing this line. Why? Because it is under the init statement and it is automatically. Did you all get this point? Why uh, def init is used? It automatically prints. Okay, so this was the basic information about def init. So, okay, so this is actually the last topic. <laughs> so this is actually the last topic. Now in init, again, you can pass some variables say if I want to pass self color size what is happening self dot color color okay so uh, uh, now what is happening the object which we are passing now how will object know that what is color what is size so if you want you can change the name if you want you can change the name to anything but it is a general con convention to keep the same name that object dot color is equal to color object ko ye pata chale ki jab wo enter kar raha hai inside the init function or any function the object must know that what is that object object is passed with another variables or not it is passed with color and it is passed with size so now what is happening over here i have created two objects obj and obj2 and obj and obj2 will take inputs why can anyone tell me why will it take two inputs yes yes very good very good nickel you got it you got this concept it is very simple if you get this concept it is very simple as that okay so why we are passing two inputs because the invent is requiring two input color and size so over here we are passing ob 
parrot and we are passing the color and we are passing the size obj2 we are passing the color and we are passing the size so what if i print it what if i just uh, run the cell what will happen what will happen what is happening over here guys it is not giving me anything why okay so let me just write it over here print show okay so we'll just get to know that what is happening print show whether in it is getting implemented or not yes it is getting implemented what is happening over here as soon as we created our object and we have passed this variable the init function will get activated and say yes we have to pass this so now let me just call config function also what will happen over here so what happened show show and then the config function the color is so instead of passing directly color we have to pass self dot color so what this config function is having color is so the what is the color of the first obj it is green so color is green and the size is 4 color is green size is 4 for the next one it is color is blue and size is 5 did you all get it did you all get this concept color is 4 and color is 5 how was the session guys was it informative was it useful for you all did you all did you all learn something new from the session So this was the basic overview and what all topics did we cover? We covered tons of topics. We covered a lot of topics starting from uh, data types, uh, comparators, we did uh, uh, containers, list, numpy, array, dictionary, Python, tuple sets, lot of topics which we, we have covered. All right. This was certainly the best session. Utkarsh, I can say it. You took two and a half hour and you spoke uh, constantly and with the same speed. That was great. Amazing job. Thank you. So, Bhaiya, like, uh, Lakshya Bhaiya, we can just, uh, for, like, we can float the feedback form. Yeah, sure. Possible. You just float the feedback form and okay, yeah. also the collab will float. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, the feedback will be floated, form will be floated and the uh, collab link will be also given over here. So, the you can check over here if you feel. So, let me just uh, guide you through this site. Let me just, uh, just wait for a second. Let me just uh, show you my screen where you can open this. Hmm. Is my screen visible? Just write yes or no in the chat section. Yes, of course, your screen is visible. All right. So as soon as you saw the last section in the collab link, I have provided few links. The first link will guide you through the Python workshop. The workshop which you attended, what it is having, it is having Python exercise which is waiting for y'all. It is having a lot of questions from the topics you can see the functions what is happening over here the definition function which i have created and you have to pass you have to uh, submit you have to give output in this format there are a lot of questions which are waiting for y'all so just make sure that to revisit uh, this uh, make sure to practice your python skill basic python skills go to our exercise solve it and just send it to us and if you are new to github i have also provided a link to github where you can learn github where the other core members of Club of Programmers have made an extensive playlist about GitHub. If you feel that you don't know anything, you can just go word, word by word and you can play this video. Or you can also go through this link where the where we have introduced Git and GitHub in one video. All right. So let me just show you some more things that why Python is important. So now it is kind of an informal session and you can talk anything that you want. So here are some cool projects which you can see in Python project, right? So as soon as this uh, workshop will be over, I will be uh, putting this uh, entire Python notebook into my GitHub, entire Python notebook into my GitHub, and you all can go and check it out. So just click the link over here. You can check it over here. Any link. These all, all these projects, all these cool, cool projects are created by just using Python, guys. So this is how Python is useful and amazing. It's amazing, guys. I want that. I feel that you all should uh explore more and more and this is all this 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 is just the start this is just the start guys this is just the start so how so that's all from my side i hope you all enjoyed the session and if you want you can just just definitely solve the exercise this will be a good practice and it will be a good revision for you all